Welcome in everyone, welcome, welcome. We are just about to be started with these grand finals matches. Six on the board tonight. So excited to bring it here to you today, guys. This is gonna be an amazing one. Welcome in guys, me and Red Eyes bringing you all the action. Red Eyes, how you doing tonight, man? Sorry guys, I don't hear you. No audio. All right, no let's go audio. ahead and tweak that Didn't real even quick. realize. <laughs> All right, it's good to see you guys. Hold on Not one a thing, second. thing, buddy. You all right now, Red Eyes? All right, here we go, guys. There we go. Should be all right on that one. I'm so sorry about that. Good to go here, guys. Me and Red Eyes <laughs> checking in real quick, and we are good. Discord forever giving us issues. How are you doing tonight, man? Oh, every day's a holiday, Brother Beans, and I could not be more excited for the grand finals of the PUBG Mobile Control Invitational. Everything that has happened thus far in Season 3 has led these participants to this point. And, you know, with only two slots going to Super League, it's going to come down to survival of the fittest and who wants it the most. Definitely. Let's go ahead and have a look at this list here tonight. Some top tier teams in this one. Looking at our previous, two of our previous champions in this one. We got Titan Gaming NA, the winners of Season 2. And then we have Extreme Slayers in this one, winners of Season 1. As well as some other teams who have really, really done well in our qualifiers leading up to this, uh, to this point here. And what a list that is. Yeah, I mean, we've got an absolute list of berserkers here, and everyone has worked really hard to get to this point. A lot of these, uh, you know, names do not need introductions. Actually, basically none of them do. But the the, the funny thing is, is, you know, uh, we had a one heck of a last chance stage where just people were at each other's heels really scratching and scraping for their shot to advance to get here and now once we're here it all resets yes. it's almost you know you are it, right. it's a, a clean slate mm -hmm. and nothing before this up to this point really it matters it's now what you do from here Indeed. and with only 12 matches you know to de to decide the whole thing you got to make each one count. You are right about that. We're having a look real fast. These were our results after last night. These top four teams did make it in. 9Z Globin ended up taking that top spot, and they earned their way in for sure. Dead Eyes guys, Dauntless, and Rusher7 will be joining them in. And it looks like we are about started here. We're going to jump in right now, starting out at Red Eyes View. All right. Well, let me go ahead and see. We got quite a, a flight path here. About as ideal as they come for the participants it's going to leave them with nothing but options right off the bat but already we can see members of the panthers not far off from straight out of nepal as well as titan gaming but with this kind of dispersion anything could happen i'm going to think i think what we'll start off is see where the eagles are landing they have flown from the nest and a little bit west of the pachinki where lotus is going to be okay so we have kr esports up north alongside rushers and i oh, that yes. has got to be and it's okay, it's uh, crazy how many hot drops we're seeing in north georgia pool this is almost never going to be that like in other yeah. events i feel like i never see it this crazy <laughs> well we we were actually talking about this yesterday you know north george it, it historically speaking has been uh, a city that known for slow gameplay it just doesn't usually have uh, people dropping North George for the sake of seeking early game confrontation. The big benefit of it is, you know, the proximity to South George where people could hot drop, but the ability to get uh, properly equipped and looted before engaging. And that is kind of what you can expect of the teams that drop there is the expectation mm -hmm. that there is not going to be too much contestation early game. Now, for teams like R7 and KR, well, clearly that didn't pan out quite as they were ex expecting. But one thing that they can uh, feel somewhat assured about is that the, the other teams did not drop here for that early game confrontation. So they are probably going to be a bit hesitant to engage as well. So the fact that we see KR and R7 so close to one another, it does not necessarily... Uh, 
raise my expectations for an early uh, stage one fight between the two. And yes, looking at that now, you can see Rusher 7 are kind of backing off of that, and they started out right nearby. I think they heard the footsteps. They are backing off. We also have, we have Ecog and Bolis. We've got them backing off. They're already throwing smokes out to cross the road. We're going to look at that real fast. I'm not sure what Ecog's trying to accomplish over here. He knows that they're over there, but he's got a full path going out to an open field. Yeah, oh, I, you know I, I'm really not sure. There was a vehicle there. I could not even see it through the smoke. Him and Bolitz are going to go and prioritize getting that vehicle, then it looks like. Okay, well, Dauntless has joined on the eastern front of North George, and that could be some third-party problems for R7. But realistically, I think we can say safely that North George is just such a congested city, um, and... There's so many positions and buildings of cover that you can be right next to a, an enemy, maybe less than 20 feet away, and, and still that could drag on for quite some time. And yes. it's the nature of North Georgia, as we said. So I'm switching out just in the, the case that there is anything else on the playing field. But if we see anything in the kill feed, I, I'll certainly be yep. swiping on back there. But I, I, I have a feeling that's going to be a bit of a battle of patience between those three teams. You are Straight right out of Nepal, going to be occupying the Milta. And I don't think that they're going to have to contest just yet. But it is interesting to see 9Z, who is who literally, to say that they uh, didn't dominate day one of the last chance stage would be absolutely false uh, they really uh set the tone for day one of the event and added a, a an intimidation factor on basically everyone else on the playing field now it's interesting to, to note that they weren't able to maintain that momentum as as drastically as they were on day one but they were still able to clutch out that first place finish Yes, absolutely. And what a finish it was. There was definitely a solid, solid performance overall. And I'm really excited to see how this is going to start out here on day one. I mean, we've got teams that really are respecting each other's drops. No hot drops here, so no no crazy well, conflict. But yeah, I mean, but at the same time, this is match one of a 12 match, you know, triathlon, so to speak. This is the long haul marathon approach and all these participants want uh, their shot at the thousand dollars. They want their shot at uh, maybe the two Super League slots that we are given away here in this event. And realistically, while, while not everyone can qualify for that, uh, I think the 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 win, the money, and the respect and intimidation that it adds on to the rest of the playing field, it's and no one wants to give up their chance at a PMCI win, 100%. especially when they've worked this hard to get to the grand finals and they definitely don't want to be making any easy uh, offerings or sacrifices on match one. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty uh, unfazed here. I think I can, you know, I would expect a slow start uh, for these participants here, at least for match one. I think moving towards uh, the half point, the midway bracket, of today round match three we're gonna start to see a little bit more aggression mm -hmm. but either way this is erangel this is a, a map that is sort of that that middle point between the distant uh altercations the you know sniper intensive fights and the close quarter combat so anything can happen and with teams like extreme slayers and golden eagles uh this close in proximity i think we may be uh due for a little side a little side swipe here maybe uh, one or two knocks i don't see any immediate uh full-on team eliminations happening in stage one though yeah i agree uh for this early on these guys are definitely well they're playing it conservative you know it's grand finals you don't want to come out and make any crazy mistakes and it does look like extreme slayers here are playing it conservative they're taking some pop shots but not really fully engaged in this robert and remix are both just going to go and head back to regroup with poppy sour yeah and this is to be expected. I mean, it, it's stage one. And as we said, that they, they don't want to be making any easy slip ups. It's just sort of testing the water, so to speak, dipping their toes in before diving on in, you know, getting a feel for it. But we are having a couple points of contestation potentially. Uh, I'm seeing, for instance, we got 
members of uh, the Sentinels, not far off at all from the Rushers. You are right about that. That is up north, and that's in the blue right now, isn't it? Mm-hmm. A little, a little dead zone camping here. And Nosh, for good reason, not trying to uh, draw too much attention to himself, but too little too late. As you can see, Cog is not a bit uh, Fold. surprised mm -hmm. of his location. Yeah, he mm -hmm. knows exactly what he's driving up to. Let's see. Unfortunately, Nosh is only one of two on BIS Sentinels. Oh, very unfortunate to see. I did see one of their members was disconnected or got eliminated by the water. And so that's Nosh here just by themselves, just trying to make something happen. And that's a tough way to start this one for yeah. BIS Sentinels. But but even a step further, if you're rushers, you know, they, I guess they, they certainly don't know that it may, they might not have seen him in the, in the lobby, you know, entering as a team of two. But uh, regardless, it, they did just have a full team rotating around a solo player in a house and then left him be. All right. And he's going to be able to walk free. <laughs> yeah, very surprised. I, the way he, the way they went around the compound, they they knew that there was, someone was there. They must have seen something, but maybe they thought that they got a vehicle and they are going to leave hey, that that's lone match member alone. One. Mm -hmm. It's that match one energy, brother. All right, so yes, we're looking to see where some of these other conflicts are going. And look at that next zone shift. Oh my goodness. That Ooh, is going to make it difficult for some of these this. teams here. Wow. Well, more yeah, our participants kicking their feet here as literally 60% of the zone has been occupied by water. That just leaves them extremely limited on real estate options. But for, you know, a t you know us, the observer, this couldn't be a better situation. I mean, we're going to get some early to mid game confrontation that we probably wouldn't have seen otherwise uh, for it being this early in the grand finals. Now they don't have the option or the luxury of of patience. It's going to be a contestation for prime real estate here. Absolutely. Especially when they don't know. It, it looks like, you know, it could be a water shift here even further. But realistically, uh, you know, if you're a team like SLR, uh, you don't really expect to have to account too much for that backside. No, that's a good point for sure. We're looking at real fast. Dead Eyes guys and Titan Gaming are both rotating in zone next to each other, but I'm not sure if we're going to see this pop off here. No, it's not happening. So it does look like the uh, the place to keep an eye on will be down here right in the middle of zone. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but that's to be expected. You know, when you're working on large maps, you're going to have some downtime, some pockets of silence, mm -hmm. bits of in-between time. And large maps are going to be probably, what do you say, Beans? Four out of the six that we're doing today? Yeah, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're going to we're gonna have some talk time, and, and that's fine. My mouth is bigger than my head, so I can talk <laughs> plenty. But, you know, it is to be expected in the nature of these large PUBG mobile maps. But you know what I always say, ladies and gentlemen, it's a more passive early game. Always, always, always directly translates to an action-packed climactic mid or end game. It'll be worth the trade, I think. Yeah, I think you're right for sure. We're looking right I'm gonna now. I'm going to get mm -hmm. KR Esports in the northwestern portion of zone. Very, very close by. Uh members of 9z yeah and we are getting some shots blinky is taken down you are right about that let's see what's happening here with this one i'll give you the controls on this one red eyes all right brother sounds good okay so that is mela is putting a hurting down as you can see blinky is already down for the count here but retaliation dished out in spades as chaco is is taken down and revenge here now that's going to leave scream simple and elite a three piece of 9z who as we were saying just really performed above uh exceptionally well here in the last chance stage so to see them carrying forward reviving their fallen teammate and trying to carry forward as a full four piece it is encouraging definitely especially at, against a team like kr definitely kr was one of our teams that won out in the previous um survival of the fittest these guys were actually in the same lobby before kr was able to move ahead while 9z got relegated to last chance but 9z we saw what they did in that lobby Ooh. and here we go great shots there wow that was the dead eyes oh, closing oh, oh, oh. their eyes right there on them open no more and shifu will now uh enjoy the second of the team's eliminations his first 
carrying on as a full four piece and in the distance the panthers having at it with somebody i did not see who Let's but we're about out. to find out brother mm -hmm. it is them in slr here all right i will get slr up on my alt cam we'll right. get both sides of this Ooh, standoff man, here stay. Oh, great shots with that s12 Ooh. Well, Moso, a man who needs no introduction, ready and waiting behind this boulder, cooking up a utility, going to try to make it rain a little hellfire on White Elegy for a thirst. Can he get it? He was able to provide enough cover for Illusion to be revived, but nades are still being put out here, just swallowing this damage. Koi, back up and about, not able to stick a revive on White Elegy after all. And just push. like that. It was, and and that's going to put a real uh, load of pressure here on Koi and Kaidness. You know, reduced down to half their starting lineup this early on with uh, members of the Panthers outnumbering Ooh. them four to two. The Panthers Poppy Triste most excellently, most so excellently took down Poppy Triste. I think Poppy Triste stepped in front of the nade right as it was coming out and and kind of blocked it. Well, if you're if you're super lazy reflex, you know you really don't have many better opportunities because uh, you know you, you know you have it at, at the very worst in a 2v3 scenario so i i'm not really sure if, if i understand why there was that much hesitation on the push if or you know if they had an opportunity to try to retreat that would have been it as well yeah absolutely but I again remember viewers that our participants are professional players and know a lot better than I do how to navigate the game. And also we have that observers 2020 vision here. That is a luxury not afforded to these players. 100%. We're looking more at this SLR fight. You see Koi is moving back around. We'll be regrouping with kindness. 90 sitting on the hill watching this whole thing go down and they're going to start third party and sending shots down towards kindness. I'll tell you what, I will get eyes from eye in the sky here behind 9z if i can yep and it looks like moso pulling a a hilltop flank rotation here let's see how i'll this get works. it from his perspective right here and now oh, you right. have it as well yeah nice. no, go ahead i'm gonna jump to you on that one okay i will get both sides of it then so 9z a continuing forward as a four piece outnumbering the opposition and still really more primarily concerned with rotating into this zone but they got the eagles not far off either here look at that little just shows them uh floating in, in midair yep. <laughs> well but take note of the confidence that they're they're exerting here just spreading out uh, and really kind of suffering for it you know Ch chaco downed and quickly very likely to be thirsted to follow if scream elite or simple not able to provide any sort of overwatch or cover fire it looks like they were able to get a yes. smoke out there yes good and good i timing. see a little a little spectator glitch as elite just teleports over but they cannot <laughs> forget about the remaining threat behind them in the shape of the panthers and we got to remember too i have to reiterate this the panthers dropped 34 limbs in the lobby if they were able to win out earlier this week here so they are absolutely a capable team and you see they are bringing the fight to our top team in yesterday's last chance lobby all right all right and the illusion pushing forward here we go means i think we have the same thing going on right here <laughs> oh I what a nade so on screamsy nade wow it was coy that long range nade i can't believe this. it hit Beautiful <laughs> toss, SLR. Are you seeing from my so screen? On point from with the nades. Yes, I think so. Oh, we had man. a uh, a Wonder Woman invisible jet being flown around here. Elite <laughs> swallowing that nade and then quickly thirsted to follow. Nine Z, one of the top performing teams in the last chance stage, reduced down to their final hope here in match one. They're gonna be one of the first teams eliminated. If so, and. This could be a huge wake-up call for a team like 9Z. And mm -hmm. bringing me to a great point here, what worked so well in the... Yeah. That's the squad that, wipe. Chaco yep. just became a bowling pin mm -hmm. in the spare that the Panthers dished out. And just like that, it brings up a great point. You know, 
a lot of these teams that performed at elevated levels in the last chance stage are in for a rude awakening because you're dealing with the very best of the best in the region. Some of those who, you know, immediately qualified for these grand finals. It is going to be a higher level of competition for sure. Oh, and the Koi nice is shot, out boy. of the water. Oh, great hits there. Bringing the fight straight done. to the Panthers. Very surprised that they didn't back off this. This shows just how good SLR feels about this. Just their confidence levels overall. Well, with Kindness and Koi here. In a 2v2, a fair fight altercation here. And a bit of a spread by the Panthers, to be honest. And I'm not even sure if Poppy Triste will be able to relay any real scouting info to the high ground holder is teammate Moso. Yeah, no, there's no way he would have uh, from that positioning. Mm -hmm. So I think he's realizing that now as well. Ooh, trying and to get I'm going to go ahead and smoke. get a... Oh, we got Dark Esports coming in for a yeah, potential third that. party. Calicar walking through open beach landscape and just going to show how distracted these two teams are. They're just zoning in, seeing red, focusing in on each Hyper other. Hyper focus well, right here for sure. Oh, oh, the nade from Koi, perfectly timed. And that well, is a beautiful that. squad wipe for SLR. Well, they are out of the frying pan, but potentially into the fire if members of Dark Esports decide to try to engage in a third party. And the fact that they haven't here, honestly, I, I, I believe Calicar could have had visual or still could on Koi. So I, I'm going to say a bit, bit too hesitant at this point, but we have too many things on the playing field happening right now to just hang out and uh, focus on what has been. Let's yeah. focus on what will be. And right now we've got members of Extreme Slayers duking it out in the northern portion of zone here as we speak. All right, we're jumping over to that real fast. Yes, you see Extreme Slayers moving around now. Let's have Who are a they, look at uh, that. they duking it out against? It looks to be the member of Sentinels, Oh, Nosh. no, Nosh, the so lone I have member. Both, I'll have both perspectives up here. We got Eye in the Sky and Nosh's perspective and making his final stand, literally semi, uh, swimming in a sea of Extreme Slayers here. Poppy Sour at the forefront of this aggressive push and <laughs> Nosh <laughs> swallowing the damage right then and there, but still clinging to health. Still alive here and, and playing it really well as a solo. I'm surprised that they have not been taken out it, here sooner. Yeah, it's honestly a, gonna have to say a bit hesitant uh, mm -hmm. on Extreme Slayers and in a situation where they outnumber their opponent four to one. But you have to keep in mind a little bit of context Ooh. as the Golden Eagle's nest is just above them with a high ground overwatch position. And as you can see, Remix quickly pushing forward. Yeah, great shots from Ked there to take down Poppy Sour. And they are going to try to capitalize it. The rest of Golden Eagles moving up. Jawoon, Rana, and Duke, Duchu, Duku moving up. And let's see. Ooh. With the uh, outlying threat of Dauntless, literally turning members of extreme slayers in the into the deli meat of a peanut butter and treble sandwich dauntless and uh pardon me this this color code thing is going to throw me off and the golden eagles are going to be that deli bread here is this stuck in between a rock and a hard place and Juya, robert and remix no that is going to explain a little bit of this hesitation and i think for good reason they don't want to be putting themselves in any immediate opportunities they don't want to be putting them offering themselves on a platter any free elims to their opponents here absolutely not we're looking over at koi right now who's moved up uh slr has great position above dark esports there knocks on two of these members here so far although dark esports was able to get calicar picked up this is quite a position for dark esports to be choosing to utilize um for better or for worse, but I, 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 I'm trying to uh, give them the benefit of the doubt and think of what the benefit is, but I, I just can't. And case in point, Amrit being struck by nice Koi shots, there. Nice right shot, some Koi for sure, and Kindness is going to follow up with a nice nade. Try to get the quick a limb here. Is that going to hit? We saw Koi get a really nice, or is Kindness who threw that nice nade earlier uh, behind 9Z to start the knocks or start that squad wipe on them. Let's just see. Take hailstorm of nades crashing down around Amrit. He is thanking his lucky stars that he was able to get revived, but realistically, that was an SLR grace 
that they they gave him, you know, and that really should not have been allowed. All the while, Dauntless and Lotus squaring off in the distance. Oh yeah, let's jump over to that real fast. We do have them on this hillside here, and lots of craziness going on in this situation. Carrie's trying to get all riding on Anders. Oh yeah, Anders is the last one there from Lotus, and he's moving up. He's not going to back off of that. Yeah. Oh, but this could be good. Catching them unawares, and they are dangerously close to one another. Oh, oh my nice goodness. Nice nade from Ander. Yeah, but Banger revived in the only possible way. Oh, my goodness. And Dark Look Esports. At that. <laughs> oh, good angle Even there Even though Amrit. taken out. Even though he, uh, Ander gets, you know, removed from the equation, he does take two birds with one stone. Unfortunately, there is no thirst opportunity there. But with the remainder of Dark Esports... D2, Kalakar, and Amrit, perhaps they can build on to what he started. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. They have gotten some good nades over here. They're trying to take out or trying to get this position here. It's a, a bit tough out being this far out in the open field, and their vehicles have all been used up. Amrit's using that one car body right now for cover, but you see Golden Eagles, Extreme Slayers, Dauntless, all holding on to that high ground, all seeing these teams out here really well. All right. Yeah, I'm going to get a big eye in the sky here for this Overwatch. Get a li little bit more of the lay of the land to scout. We got a love triangle forming between the likes of Dauntless, uh, Extreme Slayers, and Golden Eagles. And honestly, Hayuya and Banger of Dauntless, yes, they are going to square off here and now. Hayuya putting in the, the preemptive damage and his teammate able to capitalize on what he started that brings them up to six elims scratch that yep they are up to six elims and trying to build on to it with three more on dauntless so far no real significant damage done to dauntless as you see pain maybe about 75 percent at at worst but the real threat here for a team like dauntless is the outlying threat behind them in dark esports Focusing in on the Eagles or Extreme Slayers seems pretty easy to do here when they're engaging nonstop. But the team behind them that's going to be rotating in almost certainly, uh, if we don't have Banger at least holding the off angle of the southbound Overwatch, it's almost certain defeat for Dauntless. Yeah. So this is really dividing up their resources into a team of carry and pain versus multiple teams that outnumber him in that light and same for banger with this overwatch position he is still outnumbered by the dark esports members three to one and if he were to you know turn his attention to where the remainder of his team is engaging with it would be shots in the back and immediate elimination yep yep he is definitely being pinned down right now a lot of shots in that direction and it's making life hard for Dauntless here. They do have Extreme Slayers right next to them. I'm surprised we haven't seen these two start to go at it. Oh, Banger sent some great shots back there. But yeah, this has been a much more uh, conservative Extreme Slayers than we're used to, to say the least. Very surprised to see them just staying back like that. Yes, I mean, we in, in past tournaments, they were the, the champions in Season 1. They were pushing every team when possible, but they are really are. I think they recognize that there are some pretty good teams in this lobby, and they are kind of just taking it easy, sitting in this low ground right next to Golden Eagles, which I'm anticipating oh, we're going to see a fight between here soon. Yeah, it is all going down, and all the while, yes, it is one of the eagles shot from the nest. Jawoon is taken down, leaving things in the hands of Rana, uh, pardon me, uh, Ked, and Duchu. Mm -hmm. Duku, pardon me. Here we and go. look at this, the, the use of these vehicles in the final stage of this, uh, stages of this match. It's a risky move, but they are out here actively searching for the enemies so seeing this con conservative approach in terms of actually acquiring nox and thirsting i'm wondering if extreme slayers is attempting to to really slow play this here they're, they're a very aggressive team and a very confident team in their their confrontations even as solos so i think we're just seeing just how bad they want that prize pool mm -hmm. and those pmsl slots absolutely I mean, they do have about seven limbs right now, so that's not terrible for this. If you get a first place on top of that, that's solid right there for a first round. I think regardless, uh, oh, with Remix literally surrounding Rana, Rana trying to make a final stand with a DP28. 
and it is going to be all for naught. The Eagles are back to the endanger list, and that'll bring extreme slayers up to nine. Elims, count them up. Robert GG swallowing a little bit of retaliatory nade damage, leaving things in the hands of Remix and Hayuya. But we are down to our final three teams, ladies and gentlemen. We got Dauntless, we got Extreme Slayers, and we got our solo remaining from straight out of Nepal, Wolf OP, in what looks to be a 3v3v1 to end round one of the day. Well, let's see how this is going to go. Wolf OP from straight out of Nepal was able to stay low over there, avoid much gunfire on himself. So Dauntless and Extreme Slayers will be fully focused on themselves, and that may actually help out uh, straight out of Nepal here. Well, you know, if you are straight out of Nepal's Wolf OP, the best bet you could possibly have is laying low under the radar and letting these two teams duke it out, letting those numbers dwindle, because as a solo, the odds of being able to acquire multiple eliminations are pretty difficult, but the odds of maybe just staying hidden for a few seconds longer and getting those extra two placement points from third to second, <laughs> that is worth laying low for. Absolutely. No question on that one. Uh, even if you don't have a whole lot. Oh, but straight out of Paul did end up just getting taken out. I think Carrie had the angle and we have a 3v2 situation. Dauntless Pain. looking good. Payne did get hit hard off that nade. Yeah, well, the interesting thing is, is we have an almost fair fight here. A 3v2 between these two teams and Hayuya oh, swallowing man. the damage. It's all on Carrie, Robert. Carrie, great shots from Carrie. The flank and from the Carrie was done. beautiful there and comes in and gets the transfer, the double knock for the win for Dauntless. Wow, great, great first round from them. Let's have a look at our total after that one. It is going to be 14 limbs for Dauntless. GG's to them, second yeah, place. That is, a, mm -hmm. that is a very impressive performance, and I think by any stretch uh, of the term here, 24-point takeaway from round one alone, that is a way to set the tone for the entire grand finals, and it adds a confidence factor, adds a little bit of momentum for Dauntless, and that intimidation factor that it dishes out to the rest of the playing field going to be huge way to set the tone dauntless esports love to see it they were actually one of the teams that made it back from the last chance so they were facing elimination the past uh two days being in that lobby or potentially facing it if they didn't uh if they didn't do well in those but they absolutely did earn their spot in and love to see that they come in grabbing the first round first win of the day here all right well that is kind of uh, i think that this was pretty much the start that we could expect uh beans for for being day one of a two-day grand final event we still have 11 matches of action mayhem and strategy ahead of us now we kick things off on the very first map ever introduced to the game Aaron Gale. but as we know that is the one they are most familiarized with the one that they participate on the most and the one they're probably most comfortable with and if anything has been proven to us over six years of PUBG Mobile Esports, it's that these different maps mean different geographies. Different geographies mean different strategies. Mm -hmm. What worked so well on Erangel may not be the ticket for a wide open, uh, vast open landscape like, I don't know, let's say an open desert or a lush condensed uh, Sandhawk map. So I am curious to see, you know, if they are going to be able to maintain what they started here moving in to match two and three you know i'm sure once we get into dialing things back around going back to erangel for the second time today that there's going to be a lot of expectations on, on dauntless a lot of eyes on them but i am curious even more than that to see if they're able to maintain this momentum and and apply it to a different tactic a different geography uh and really start to kind of solidify this lead that they're, that they're establishing on the rest of the playing field. 100%. I mean, definitely, definitely how you want to begin these uh, these rounds here. Looking over at Dauntless on that one, we're going to see how they are going to be adjusting here going into Miramar now. But Extreme Slayers are winners from the previous round. They did end up getting that second place win on that one. And uh, Ain't nothing wrong with Silver, brother. There you go. They're going to be a team I really have a close eye on this one. I like how they've changed up their play style a little bit. We did see them playing a little conservative at the end. But they got a good amount of points. So um, It is encouraging to see that, that more... Uh, reserved approach here in round one. It means that they're taking this event seriously and they want to win. They're here to play, but they're here to play tactically and, and intelligently. And they proved that in spades here with uh, 
that many elimination points taken away in round one alone. It's going to be impressive, uh, and it's going to be difficult to maintain something like that. But it, even if they're not able to, this little slack in the rope that they've established for themselves is certainly going to come in handy uh, down the road later today. Absolutely. Really love to see it. Love to see teams that were, you know, kind of on the ropes coming back that strong. It really does say a lot for them. But uh, yeah, yeah, guys, good first round in the books. We're going to go ahead and get ready for the next one. Miramar is back on the list now here. No more words with any issues on that map. So should be exciting to see, guys. For now. Stick around. Be back soon. Yep. Be back soon, guys.
All right, folks, we are back here coming into things. Let's have a look at our results from the last one. And as you guys can see, Dauntless did end up taking that top spot there. 14 limbs banger from Dauntless with eight limbs total. Very, very nice first one in the books there, Dauntless. Absolutely. I mean, there's a way to set the tone for a grand final and a 24 point takeaway is not a bad start a chicken dinner on the tip of your tongue finish to begin your day is a great confidence momentum factor to uh to build off of and let's not discredit teams like extreme slayers um phenomenal phenomenal performance from them as well slr and straight out of nepal at each other's heels here and same can be said for the eagles and dark but after that the entire uh bottom placing ninth through 16th quite a bit of improvement uh ahead of us i'm hoping and what better place to do it than that dry arid open landscape i'm of course speaking of the uh destruction in the desert miramar at 100 percent and speaking of miramar match two has started let's go and have a look and see what these teams are looking at on this plane path so now our participants are absolutely blessed with about the most ideal path possible for a map like Miramar, perfectly centralized, left with nothing but drop spot options and real estate to choose from, which could be uh, a little indicative of a slower first half of the match potentially, but already we're seeing 9Z and the rushers dropping Oh, what right looks to you be are. close to each other. Yes. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll I'll tune into that. Who are you gonna watch on it? I'll go to the other team. Yeah, I'm looking at uh, nine nine Z right now. Let's see what's happening right. with them. I will get eyes on the rushers. And interestingly enough to note that rushers entering this match as a three piece, coming in with less firepower, oh. less manpower to utilize. And for someone like Cog uh, of R7, he is dangerously close to the opposition here. Yes. I'm looking at Simple right now, who is I definitely got eyes on Ecog. Knows that they are there. And we are gonna see, and here comes another 9Z member to follow up. Elite is in the area here, giving his teammates some backup. Ecog's just gonna stay low. Doesn't wanna be an easy target. Knows that somebody landed nearby, I'm sure. And Kong is putting up the shots, but swallowing retaliatory damage and barely injuring Chaco. Now he is swimming in a pool of 9Z. They are swarming on him like mosquitoes in the North Carolina summer, and it is go time. Ecog! Whoa! Great shots from Ecog! With that AKUMP combo, he's got two CQC ideal and weapons. And look at him go simple. with jump shot! It, and Shaco down to half health. He might pull off. This is getting, he's playing very, very confidently here. No fear whatsoever. I love it. I love it. I love it. Really, you can see he wants to go for the jump shot. And he goes for it again, not nice. hitting it. So close to hitting his mark and no health to cling to, but you know, for the performance that he's already sh put off, it's it's oh. almost going to be a cr what just happened. The third, third party? No. Yes, it was a third. It was not even third party. It was spooky in the distance from the hill that just oh. helped out his teammate. It's the only wow. way to, oh. that he could have been able to assist him is from a high ground point to get through that window. I, that's I, I have to think, but the kill feed was a little delayed on that. But either way, rusher well, seven. Regardless, Wow. We've got Titans going in now, and they're up against uh, members of, pardon me. Oh, yeah, straight out in the fall, and Titans having at it right now. Yes, As we they speak, are. we got PZ inactive and Doran remaining up. Yes, it looks like WDNN from Straight Out of Paul trying to show, get a knock here at least. And he's not alone. Vortex is still up Down two to in the PZ. distance. It ain't going to be so easy, PZ. Oh, no. Titan it's... Gaming. Ooh. Oh. Oh, it's just Doran now here. Does get the, the res off on Crow. Yeah, this is going to put a lot of pressure here on the shoulders of Crow and Doran with literally nothing to speak of in terms of meds. And for someone like Crow uh, without a vest, it, it could be basically a, a slaughterhouse if he has no armor to really defend himself with or meds to heal up. This is a tough one. Crow trying to fall back to a position of safety and acquire some resources. Doran trying to push forward a little bit here with the Uzi M16. 
But literally, oh, he does have a first aid. He needs to find oh, a position to man. heal up in, and time is of the essence. Straight on up, Paul was so quick to push that. Does not get the knock on him. They weren't being very squirrely here. Well, the crow is back up and about. Ooh, on Doran! Speed here. Great shots nice going through the down. window on WDNN. Great to note that, you know, I believe that he didn't even have an extended mag in that Uzi. I, I, it didn't sound no, like he did. No, I don't think clip. he did, no. And if the M16 is able to outdo, okay, well, you got a little third party or teammate assistance there from PZ coming in clutch there. But look at this, Doran, Crow, and PZ all weekend here, all extremely limited on resources and still getting the job done. But straight out of Nepal, being allowed the opportunities to revive. Yes, yes. I'm very surprised they gave him that too. I really thought we were going to see a lot of, uh, well, I thought we were going to see them try to push that. They knew that they had Titan Gaming NA a little bit on their, on their heels and they yeah. have definitely backed off. This certainly does seem to be like a, a little bit of a hesitation on both ends, to be honest. Both teams allowing each other to be revived, and we are once again brought back up to what was two solos and now a 2v3. Yes, and we, we've also got 9Z and another team facing off. We do want to finish this one off for now, guys. This is right. looking like a good one here. Tell you what, I'll get a, the 9Z one up on the alt cam. Get a little bit of the best of All both right. worlds. And that's Nemesis with them. Oh, it looks like Nemesis might be out of the equation. I believe, am I correct about that? Let's double check it. Not quite yet. It looks like Nemesis. What, what team number? That's number seven, uh, oh, yes. Nemesis. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I apologize. All right. So, yeah, getting eyes on the alt cam here. As you can see, Berlin engaging with the likes of Rusher 7, cooking up a molly, trying to make it rain a little preemptive hellfire on his opponents. Spec and Berlin hold in position. Spec readily equipped with the Scar L UMP combo. Both absolutely intimidating weapons for that close quarter combat. 100%. Yes. And this is actually Nemesis taking on this fight after taking out 9Z. So, this is a third party from Rusher 7. But see, I, I do notice that Nemesis only has one E limb on the board. So if they were taking out oh, uh, members of 9Z, right. that means that they, after putting all that work in, getting those knocks, they still were too hesitant to acquire those thirsts. Ooh, oh, but the Titans aid. falling from Olympus right there. Wow. That's David getting Goliath. And now look at this. WDN with the Uzi, no extended, pushing forward at below half health with a almost total level one best, getting the surprise factor on Crow. Let's see, oh, and, and Titan Gaming eliminated early on here in this one, 13th place in round one. Surprising to see on that. Yeah, talk about uh, being taken down a peg or two. And then Nemesis off in uh, the distance, able to come through with that squad wipe and acquire their first four elims. And literally 75% uh, of those elims go to JS alone. That is a heavy backpack, Beans. Yes, it is for sure. And I think when we first called it out, I think I had it mixed up a little bit. I believe Rusher 7 was the one engaging 9Z because they were near each other. And Nemesis were the ones who came in with a top tier third party uh, in that one. And we see that it worked out for them. If that was the case, four limbs for them. And they're feeling good after that. Well, leads me to wonder what other action is afforded to us on the playing field. We got our eyes on Lotus, but it does look like SLR has a member uh, approaching southbound into yes, INF, I see and that. this could be particularly dangerous. It's a koi swimming in a, you know, a pond of enemies <laughs> here and quickly trying to readjust his his strategy. Yeah, he- Retreat back to a position of safety. He, he got, he got a, a little spidey sense tingling, immediately backed off that, went the other way, and is gonna look to regroup the rest of the squad, it looks like. The next KR. zone did shift. Yes, KR. And KR on the west or eastern front, trying to rotate in from the dead zone here. I will pull that up on, actually, let's get that on both here, both sides. And I'll pull up straight out of Nepal as well. See if we have anything cooking up here. And it just looks like everyone's prioritizing, rotating their way into this next zone, just trying to get a, a decent positioning and as we have seen time and time again on a map as open and vast as Miramar you know this 
early high ground positioning or just prime real estate positioning can be the absolute critical variable that that separates a win from you know a, a fifth or sixth place finish that's a great point right there for sure especially on a map like miramar that gives you so much vision out there those high grounds really really can do a lot for you in bullying these other teams we got extreme slayers pulling up right behind slr this could spell trouble for them robert does yeah. get the knock on white elegy well they are not wasting the opportunity aggressively driving in remix swallowing some drive-by bullets robert is able to secure is that the thirst nades have been thrown inbound and hellfire going to crash around slr but kindness dishing out a little bit in retaliation neither connects on the mark remix going to try for one of his own Let's cooking it up is. oh so nicely for a uh, globe trick shot that does oh. not work out in his favor remix catches now, uh, Re kindness catches remix down the lane there good shots and then we have koi coming in from behind and here we have it robert gg driving behind the opponents keeping the pressure on all angles and the nades coming in from Hanuya, not quite hitting the mark. Oh, he, whoa. Oh, Schwab. He's able to get a takedown. The HP left on him. Oh, Clean what the a shot. by the hair on his chin. Trying to enshroud himself in what smoke cover he can to see if he can potentially get this first aid off. But as you can see, we've got a, a little tough situation with Hayuya desperately trying to hold the top of the stairs. we got both sides of this altercation on the, the screen here. Ayuya cooking up a little preemptive nade and maybe let's see if maybe hoping upon hope for a quick knock Ooh, and timing should not have really been worse there oh, but the s12 love the s12 one of my favorite guns in the game low key but Ayuya not able to get through that and does go down extreme slayers goes down to slr well, there is no time to waste, Brother Beans. We got Dauntless facing off potentially against the likes of Nemesis. Okay. And let's yep, check the shots that out. have been put outbound. Yes, these two are all intertwined with each other. We've got Banger over there on the other side of them. Harry is holding on to that high ground here. Oh, there we go. Shots onto the banger. Not quite enough to, to really even take him down to half health, but definitely enough to keep the pressure on and com compromise his location to the high ground holder, Claus. Yes, 100%. We see J7 down here below Klaus throwing some nades up there, trying to, well, looks like trying to get a little bit of damage sprinkle, but I don't know if this is the best push. We got three da or two Dauntless members on this hill. J7 staying low. I don't know about this one, Red Eyes. Yeah, no, I mean, fish in a barrel. We saw this happen yesterday where that high ground doesn't even need to necessarily have sight of the opponent below, but you can literally just toss some some nades over the edge and get a lucky nade. Now, mm -hmm. vice versa, JS has no visual on any of the Dauntless members. Best case scenario, a nade thrown up to the, the top. Well, Claus oh. does present a little sliver of himself, and they are going to trade nades here and now. Let's see. That actually did do some damage there. J7 had a little bit of help from his teammates behind, and look, he grabbed his vehicle immediately and wants to move off of that. He's going to try to, to uh, retreat to his teammates. Whether or not that's going to be successful. Let's see. That terrain is not working with him right now. There we go. The car well, finally gets some, <laughs> some grip on what's happening. You know, that does bring up a great point, uh, being as this map is just frighteningly open uh mm -hmm. this is you know when compound cover like in this scenario becomes few and far between it really does come down to understanding what geographical advantages you can capitalize on and i think both teams here currently nemesis and dauntless both actually doing that pretty well these little divots providing the cover uh, cover from any potential bullet fire and offering an escape route for Nemesis. And same can be said for Dauntless, utilizing that high ground and uh, those little hill crests as well. So even if a Dauntless member was knocked in that position, they would have been immediately out of the line of sight by falling prone. Definitely a great point there. I mean, that comes with experience on the map too, knowing some of these places that will give you that cover and uh, just having awareness too. Having that, having that awareness, that spatial awareness of what's happening and... And where you are coming I give, from. I want to give a, a shout out to one of our viewers, Knox. Thank you so much for uh, that little bit of info. Apparently, that is J7. Mm -hmm. Indeed. And these are, it is news to me. All the name changes. Well, look at KR Esports with their high ground holder, Ooze, really Ooh, low on health here. Clinging yes, to right. life 
in a shack. Ooh, great shots, though, through the little window on Rana. That yeah, was a great angle. I'm pretty sure it's illegal to shoot down an eagle. Yeah, that's that's they're uh, in you're danger. Jail. Somebody call the cops. That's right. <laughs> oh, we got golden. We got Dooku over here in a pretty nice angle looking at KR Esports as they roll up. But KR Esports have found some good foothills to get cover in. But I don't know. This is this is a I, tough I one too. Yeah, given the spread that the Eagles uh, are doing here, I wouldn't really call it uh, advantageous positioning for KR in any sense of the word. Just, just. I mean, I guess I see your point. They 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 are somewhat concealed from Rana, but realistically, Jawoon, if he chooses to try to get a visual, he's gonna get it. Yeah, I mean, you're right about that for sure. Look at this. There's really no cover except for from you know. Uh, north and south maybe on that but if you do get a nice position here like Jawoon has or even like Ked has right now oh man I say as I say that Ked catches the angle there on yeah. ooze and, and Jawoon ooh, retaliated blinky. by Blinky nice shots there Blinky and look we actually run. have Rana coming in to assist her fallen teammate Dooku coming in from the side now this is interesting for a particular reason I'm not so sure two members uh Pushing towards a knock teammate is the move here, especially when Dooku could have had that uh, Eastern off angle. Yes. But regardless, Hellfire has been thrown. Nades crashing down on both teams. Dooku actually probably going to... Oh, for a moment, I honestly thought he was going to get closer to nading his own teammate. <laughs> it was close. It did absolutely look close there. Let's see. Rana ditched the res, gets thirsted. Or excuse me, that down member got thirsted. Rana does end up taking down Ooze, but goes down to Melaz here. Two left from KR right. Esports, two left from Golden Eagles. And we got Melis up on the alt cam here. And now gonna make her final stand. Ked and Dooku very aggressively pushing for Dooku, UMP in hand, preparing. And look at this. Ked oh, trying to turn the opponents into a bowling pin. Good flank there for sure. Is this a 1v2 or a 1v1 at this point? It's oh, a 1v1. it's a 1v1. Yes, Rana did end up going down. Blinky's going to move over and try to deny this opportunity for Dooku to get Rana picked up. Yep, not going to give him that chance. Yep. Blinky making and his final stand, great, and he does great, come out victorious. Great play there. Love how they use the hill there to keep themselves uh, covered, and will at least be able to get Melas picked up, so KRE Sports will be a duo after that. Oh, Dauntless no time and to Lotus, waste. though. Yep, we've already got yeah. more action popping off here. SLR not too far away from that as well. Tell you what, I'm actually going to pull up Dauntless's final solo on the All big right. screen here. Yep, love it. Oh, well, actually, hold up. We got Koi of Super Lazy Reflex being swarmed upon here. Kindness going to try to catch the off angle. And yeah, all right, we are going to get it from Banger's perspective here. All right. And I'll pull up SLR on the smaller cam. SLR starting off pretty well here. The seven units already to their name. Absolutely. Fishy was going for some open shots on Koi and whoa, Schwan <gasps> kindness catches him. Oh man. Am I actually what's a kindness? It may well, no, been. kindness almost dodged a uh or he was almost nated, was where oh, I oh, oh, nice. inhaled. I there. love it. But banger and kindness literally backed turn to each other less than five feet away but kindness has other things to worry about in the shape of lotus esports and slr really i don't uh blame them for their hesitancy on uh, attempting any thirst here with drago holding that off angle I, it would be an almost certain knock exchange best case scenario and regardless oh i'm sorry about that map feed banger just kind of picked off but he was outnumbered, outmanned, and outgunned in that situation. Can't not do really too much there. Just try to, yeah. except just try to stay there and not have the fight on you. But yep, they they do have at least one win under their belt, so it's not going to be too much of a detriment to them. They uh, Dauntless can absolutely still come back from that. But for now, it looks like Lotus and SLR have started to engage one another. We also have Dark Esports and KR Esports on the other side of the map. We're going to keep it here for All now. All right, though. you said Lotus and SLR. I will get uh, SLR up on the alt cam. We have both fights here showing, and it looks like. Yeah, at this point, that is going to be it for the dark confrontation. We'll go ahead and bring up the SLR fight. All right. And it looks like some, they are... Some distance bullets. It looks yeah. like they are backing off each other, too. Kindness and Koi grab their vehicle. They've uh, moved into that little divot down there to give themselves some good cover. 
Yeah, it's 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 going to be a distance fight, which, you know, if there's ever to be a sniper intensive uh, altercation, never more likely than on Miramar, mm -hmm. which brings me to a great point. You know, it, it, you need to be aware of not just your immediate surroundings, but the potential threats off in the distance. I mean, this map we've seen time and time again, the 300 meter sniper takedowns. Yep. So, yeah, just because you might have uh, your immediate vicinity to yourself, you're never more vulnerable than low ground on a Miramar match. 100%, just so many so, so many good snipers, especially in these lobbies. Even if they you don't get hit by a sniper, you can, you know, obviously get seen just in general called out, and that's more information here for these other teams. And, and so I really do like these teams that prioritize going for that high ground, going for this position to bully these other teams. We do have uh, Nemesis looking over here towards Lotus now. Lotus was trying to keep right. themselves in position above up. SLR, and it's... Yeah, and it looks like a 2-2 split. And honestly, Lotus probably uh, with the, the right idea here to utilize their numbers to their advantage. I mean, there's 21 people remaining on this tiny, tiny, tiny zone. So really, numbers are what they have in their favor. The problem is, is that there's four other full squads here yes. to contest. Yes, a lot with. of numbers. I, I just noticed that too. I'm actually looking right on the other side of SLR. We have Dead Eyes guys pulling up, and uh, they are a full squad shooting uphill towards SLR. SLR's got some good cover right now though on that hill. All right, Dead Eyes up on the main screen here. I, I will pull. Okay, we're getting shots from Beast of Dessa. Uh, of dead eyes guys right there so we'll get both sides of the altercation here as he's shooting outwards towards inf inf not really taking any damage yet but inf by all stretch of the word playing the slow play here not a single elim to their name here gonna be a tough end game regardless but it looks like they're trying to just at at the very least acquire those placement points before engaging and risking themselves in these elim confrontations it looks like they're potentially vulnerable oh yeah uh, yep dark, dark, dark esports e mm -hmm. coming up from behind them and this is getting interesting over here we have d2 right next to bad boy and deep and you see the nades being cooked right now Let's see. Oh, oh, beautiful cook nade there. Well, well timed by Bad Boy. It might have even been deep. They both threw nades. Here comes another one yeah. from Bad Boy. Takes Ooh. down Amrit. Oh, ho, ho. look at this. Revenge dished out in full. And Bad Boy retaliating. And now it's Calicar to make his final. Oh, Calicar and Naomi's final stand. But Naomi's so far away. Calicar with the pre preemptive uh, fire there, able to get the knock and quickly the thirst to follow, but he still has multiple members of INF who have a geographical advantage over him. Calicar, that Hillcrest. Calicar just had some great return shots on Bad mm -hmm. Boy, knocks INF down to one member, so it's a 1v1 between these two. Na oh, well, Naomi has moved back in the area, so Calicar's got some support in this fight. Naomi coming in from the slightly higher ground. Yeah. There's a surprise factor here that Naomi really does not want to give up. She has one shot to catch them off guard before her location is known. Or he or she does. Yeah. And so it's going to be make that shot count. Oh, bouncing off the truck. Naomi still creeping over. We were talking about geographical advantages. Well, now here's a disadvantage of INS position is that Naomi can use it against you. Oh, However, I'm caster oh, cursing oh, and Naomi boy, with the DBS. <laughs> Yep, denied yeah. it, felt their presence, was able to catch him with a good hit. Deep gets their vehicle blown up by Dead Eyes, guys. Look at the Dead Eyes blade coming in from the off angle here. That was a great angle for them for sure. Oh, uh, Koi has just hit one of the Dead Eyes guys members in the back as they were trying to move. All right, well, we'll switch over to Blade's perspective here. And INF clinging to Bad Boy. Bad Boy alone. We got both sides of the altercation and the deed is done. Look at this, Dead Eyes guys went from literally zero eliminations to having five all going wow. to Blade, literally in a three, four minute period. Blade is cooking right now, let him cook. Woo. That's right. Well, talk about cooking, kindness Ooh. killing him with just a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. A little bit of kindness goes a long way apparently. And look at this, that's gonna bring SLR up to nine elims between a three piece and they're still Pushing forward with all three Ooh, members, and as I say nice it, Koi made. gets dynamited out of the water, and now it's on kindness and whoa. 
And Woe's got L uh, Lotus Esports coming in from that side there. It might be a 1v2 situation. Woe Schwan actually grabbing their vehicle, trying to fall back and maybe move over here with kindness or at least go for... No, they're going to go for Koi here. Nemesis yeah, and Lotus to, looking uh, at each other too. Trying to save their fallen teammate here. Kindness, not a lot of opportunities to cross this road without being vulnerable. So the fact that he shot there, a little concerning, but he still has not been eliminated. He might make it. Lotus and Nemesis right on top of each other. Anders down, Fishy last one left, but we're watching both these fights occur simultaneously. Po Shuan goes down to Blade. Blade playing very well right now. Has Woo! no helmet. Kindness last yeah, one from SLR. And that and is it, Dead Eyes guys. Done. Nice, nice play for them. They do end up getting uh, the squad wipe on SLR. And this is your top and three. Just and just a matter of moments, we went from 22 people on the field down to our final three teams spread across seven people. And Beans, we got ourselves a 3v2v2 to end round two. Almost a fair fight in this end game. Yeah, I like that. I like those odds a lot. I love to see a good even fight to decide a match. And looks like Naomi Kalikar got themselves in position. They're taking shots over there towards uh, Deadeyes guys, but I think Kalikar is going to move back up there, regroup with Naomi, get in zone. Okay, we got both sides of, well, pardon me, we're going to get both sides of the perspective here. Nemesis, the high ground holders, really, this is their advantage here, but even if they're not in the zone, they are though. I was going to say, this high ground is the best bet. It's kind of the lesser of the worst scenarios. It's not like they have great positioning per se. It's just the least detrimental position yes available. that's really a good way to describe it there uh it's kind of the same situation here for dead eyes guys they're gonna have to move up and it's not the best position they do have a good amount of foothills and stuff though but i'm curious how close nemesis is gonna allow them to get j7 already moving up right now getting ready to engage a full squad as a solo we have it oh, j7 shit. just swallowing oh, the damage. oh my goodness and looks like that his opponent got taken got out at the piece. same time. So it's a 2v3 to decide this one. And we'll get both sides of it. And look at this. Blade now up to 70% of the team's 10 wow. elims. Those dead eyes are wide open. And with 2020 vision, it is going to be intense in game between these two teams. Naomi. Naomi. Ooh, that was dangerous. Very very, very risky strat by Naomi. Mm -hmm. Out playing Hunter. And definitely, I, I hate to say this, but Naomi, you, you're basically asking for that one. Yep. Very, very risky strategy for a in-game on Miramar at the three piece. But hey, with the way they've been performing in this match, I don't really blame them uh, for making a high aggro risk. Yeah, I agree. Oh, Calicar with the P90 gets the knock on Blade. Well, now we got a 1v2 here. DeLeon able to secure a revive on Beast, but now in charge of covering for his fallen teammate Blade. However, it does not look like Blade is... Oh, I see why. He's in front. There's no way of reviving yep. him. No. Unfortunately. Oh, you see uh, Leon throwing Little, bandages ahead. Yeah. I love that. Love to see that. That's a great strat. Yep. Don't not, I have to go all the way up there. Naomi does end up getting thirsted. Calicar trying to peek and find an angle here as a solo though. Oh, great shots on Leon. Oh not goodness. enough to get the knock though. It was so close. Chipped down to, to half of his health. But if Dead Eyes does not capitalize on that kind of damage, which is understandable why they haven't yet. They have no way of aggressively pushing forward fast enough before he's able to met up. There's no uh, vehicles in their possession here in this in game. As you can see, there's a, a vehicle for Calicar, but that's not going to help the Dead Eyes guys. Not at all. Calicar actually got some good damage with that bouncing nade. But they're backing off. Dead Eyes guys are going to regroup a little bit, maybe try to share some some meds or something amongst themselves. Calicar's, you see, they're they're looking. They're not sure how to play this right now. They didn't expect DE to back off like this, but they are absolutely aware it's a one v two situation. Yeah, and Calicar, his hesitation here, understandable from his positioning. He's got basically the last little amount of cover he's going to have in this. Mm -hmm. We are at the final zone. There is no next zone here. Stage nine, we all know what this means. Somebody's got to go down here. 
and it's got to happen now. He's trying to enshroud himself in what cover he can and going to exemplify just how crucial these utilities can be in an in-game like Miramar. Calicar, oof, outnumbered and two angles on him. Mm -hmm. It was a great effort, though. His shots were accurate. They were they were hitting the mark. It's just outnumbered, outmanned, outgunned, and outpositioned. Yes, very, very nice job to Deadeyes guys for locking that down. It could have gone worse for them if they if they had backed off too far, if they didn't play that well, that solo. We saw Calicar making some great shots there, and uh, yeah. you really got to not play that lightly. You got to make sure you are just finishing off there, and Deadeyes guys using their last two there to really, really make sure that they got that win. GG's to them. They're going to drop a total of 12 eliminations on their way to that chicken dinner. Darkies I mean, sports, just in, bad either. in, in, mm -hmm. in per perspective, you know, that that's literally two points less uh, than I be we believe was it uh, extreme. No, it was nine Z uh, area and extreme slayers putting up, you know, pretty impressive points last match. This is a little bit less uh, elimination intensive, I believe two less. But realistically, this is a, on a Miramar match. This is a pretty high, high elim count here for uh, a Miramar in any stretch of the word, but 22 point takeaway from one round is nothing to wag your finger at. And same can be said that there ain't nothing wrong with silver as dark esports enjoys a pretty healthy 13 point gain uh, from one match alone. Granted, that is an 11 point difference between second and first. And that's why I wanted to bring this up is, is the context is yes, there's a first place, there's a second place, but the difference between these two here is a pretty significant one. So you got to give flowers and, and roses to where they're due here. Dead Eyes really, really uh, thriving in the desert. Something I want to highlight as well. This is another one of our last chance teams getting a win here. In round one, it was Dauntless. In round two, it was Dead Eyes, guys. These last chance teams riding that momentum that they built from that phase straight into the grand finals. And uh, love to see these teams performing. Man, those those eyes might be dead, but they're seeing 2020 vision and they are wide open. But can they maintain something like this, Beans? You know, we were talking in round one uh, about how Erangel is a totally different beast to tackle mm -hmm. than the wide open air desert of Miramar. But then when you condense things into that lush, lush jungle of Sandhawk, it is an entirely different strategy and beast to tackle on its own there as well. Um, you know, what what that overwatch distance sniper tactic from a high ground that seems to just be the the bread and butter of miramar mm -hmm. well that's not going to work on the absolutely condensed, not uh forest when a cqc intensive close quarter combat intensive map like sandhawk i'm curious to see if they're going to be able to maintain that as we move into round three Yes, great point there. There are some teams that really do better on Sandhawk. I've noticed the close quarters, you know, it, it, some teams benefit from that long range. Some some are good mid range, whatever it is. The CQC demons are the ones who love to see Sandhawk, especially in certain zones. So I'm excited to yeah. see who's going to who's going to make their name here in this one. We've seen a few teams that maybe underperform. Titan Gaming NA was one I was kind of looking at to to have already grabbed a win here. <laughs> Yeah, we were talking about Titan before today even started, how we were both keeping a close eye on them just because we have so much high expectations for them. But we've seen what they can do when they start building that momentum. And this is only two matches down. Mm -hmm. We still have 10 more rounds of action ahead of us over the next two days. And Titan, you know, they, they've proven themselves to very much be Titans. And I think we might see a change in the tides moving forward. A great point right there 12 total on this one compared to the previous rounds which were usually 10 matches it'd be five a day this is six a day on this one so yes plenty plenty more action ahead here uh in fact we are going to go ahead and get ready to start the next one me and red i was going to go ahead and jump in the lobby guys stick around and we will be back here soon with the start of round three on sandhawk
all right welcome back everyone welcome back let's go ahead show our results from that last one. Oh, excuse me i wanted to show off our chicken dinners here and yes once again dead eyes guys did end up grabbing that win overall with 12 uh, limbs on that last one blade really showing out there at the end grabbing what six of limbs in the in the last two minutes something like or the last few zones anyways yeah the last two zones alone it was a very impressive final stand there. But as we were saying at the end of the last match, every different geography presents different strategies. And already we are dropping in a little rumble yes, in the we jungle. Are. And Ooh. we got Titan Gaming here in the throws already. 
Lotus and Titan all up in the mix, all all condensed with each other. And this is some action here. Titan Crow has got Ooh. three on him. He gets the knock though. Beautiful transfer there. Gets the triple and knock. Nice. He the got crow it. Crow has <laughs> it is a feast for crows, my bro. Oh my goodness! I absolutely love to see it. Wow! I've got so many dad jokes ready. That was a koi was a fish out of water. Ghost <laughs> turned into a ghost. <laughs> the, the Titans are are starting off heavy here. Now that's going to put a real strain on Lotus Esports' final hope, Anders. And, you know, if you are Anders, you know the name of the game has completely shifted to just trying to stay alive. And that is not like to happen. He is already spotted and swallowing damage, reduced down to three-fourths of his overall health. But there's other fights happening at the same time. Uh, we got Rusher 7. And this is a typical Sandhawk start. This Bloodbath warfare from the get-go. So crazy, but I love to see it. Absolutely, yes. We're going to Rusher 7 next. We we know that Ander is probably facing a limb here in this situation. Tell you what, while you get it up there, I'll bring up Rusher 7. We can switch between the two. All right. Oh, did he just get wrecked? I yes, heard it. I yes, heard it. That is yep. it. That is it. All <laughs> Poor right. Fella. Back over to Rusher 7 with them and Nemesis. Yeah, it does look to be... Uh, Already, they've taken a hit, losing Spooky early on, reducing him down to a three-piece of Veto, Cog, and Bullets. We can see Cog perched ready and waiting with a Vector. Not really the ideal SMG for this scenario, but uh, it's what you work with what you got in an early game drop. And here you can see Spec may not know. Oh, he had some well, good quick shots there. He did back Ecog off a little bit. It's a problem with that. the, the Vector is just that fast clip dispersion mm -hmm. i mean it just empties a clip before you're able to really uh calibrate for any missed missed shots yeah absolutely so you better hit your you better hit the mark if you're using the vector look at cog thanking his lucky stars that he did not take that molly damage and look here just one rock separating spec from a 1v2 bullets at half health might help even the situation a little bit but cog overly hesitant to uh, push on a weakened spec, meaning that he definitely does not know what uh, that his shots have actually weakened him. There's no way mm -hmm. that they would be this hesitant otherwise. Yes, and I, I'm really surprised to see that. I mean, I, it's got to be the fact that they don't have many heals right now. Both ECOG and but, Bolitz have nothing here besides their boosts. But look what he's... See, the problem with that is, is that Nemesis is... Our, uh, R7 is now allowing Nemesis to get a little backup in the in the form of berlin here able to come get this off angle that he really wouldn't have had here had cog not been so hesitant yeah that's a great point oh we have uh extreme slayers behind bolitz turns and takes down robert uphill did not expect that we saw i saw extreme slayers in the area but i didn't think they were going to engage poppy sour able to catch bolitz as he was trying to move up and I've got a top-down view of, of Roberts is coming in from the off angle, but it does look like he was knocked in the process. So Poppy Sauer going to have to fall back to, for, to a position of safety to try to get a revive on his fallen teammate. Indeed. What could have been a real opportunity for the Extreme Slayers. Unfortunately, uh, you have to keep your resources and your team alive for that to work. So I'm going to switch my attention over to KR Esports for just a brief moment because it does seem like they are currently sandwiched in between members of Sentinels. Yes, I think you're right. And Sentinels, they have some numbers here after only having that one member in the first round. You know they're going to be eager to get some points on the board themselves. Yeah, Sentinels with a lot of ground to make up there. But keep in mind, they are just a three-piece with a, you know, coming in at a less manpower, less firepower. They're going to have to be a bit more reserved, at least in the first stage, first few stages of this match. Um, and we've seen time and time again, you know, three pieces pull out chicken dinners and really capitalize in those last two zones, maybe. But right now, it's going to be, well... It was, Sentinels, as mm -hmm. I cast or curse them, they have already lost one of their members. Oh, I take that back. No, it, it, was, it wasn't. It was uh, KR. It was it was yeah. shit catching one of those members over trying to move up to this compound. And we are evened up here, although Jelly and Chris are not in position to really give support to uh, Chris and Jelly aren't there to give support to JIT, really. But I'm surprised. Yeah, to that see. positioning is, is not ideal for them, is it? Not really. I'm really surprised to see 
No, matter of fact, here's Ooze and Blinky. They are pushing it. That's exactly what I expect. I thought I saw Mela's backing off at first, but yes, they are coming in to 3v1 this. Jit staying low. They don't see him. They do not oh see Jit goodness. right now. They were literally one step away, and Blinky did not see Jit. Yeah, and he is cooking up a utility. This might hit. Oh, a little, a little overcooked. A little bit and too cooked. Yep. Problem is, is, is I don't think that they're going to allow him to have that, that kind of line on him twice uh, there's no way yeah now blinky news falling out around the back end of it understandably so and meanwhile we've got on the other end of the map golden eagles and titans squaring off lots of action on the board for an uh, early sandhawk as to be expected oh i'm excited to see that with titan this one will be coming into i've got an eyes on it I'll, I'll let you know if anything happens with it all right but currently perfect. it's just a battle of patience between them yes that's kind of what i was expecting to see early game yeah. uh, at least with the teams that didn't drop hot a bit conservative play here especially for a team like titan gaming who did start out maybe not on the right foot maybe not how they Ooh, wanted to i'm actually about to have a little uh bit of action i think if oh i withdraw that statement they have no idea of nate's positioning i, I withdraw that Nate is posted up in a house and holding position, understandably so. Extreme Slayers working their way uh, southbound into the Panthers, potentially. And meanwhile, I see it in the kill feed. Sentinels, Jit, taking out Ooze and now quickly trying to capitalize on a weakened Blinky. Yes, Blinky is the last one here. Gets hit hard by Blinky, though. Blinky with some great shots, takes down Jit and gets the thirst. Jelly scrambling Ooh. to get this res off. Well... Let's the see. jelly is getting able to, to revive Krish, and now they're pushing forward, you know, and at to what in the worst case is a fair oh, pardon me, not a fair fight, a 2v3 scenario. The hesitancy by Jelly really may have um thwarted any potential chance of a fair fight there. Unfortunately, who's is able to get brought back up will he be able to heal up in time it doesn't seem so but the oh, off angle and he doesn't oh need goodness, to heal he doesn't need to heal wow what a what an angle there i can't believe they didn't check the corner you uh, gotta yes. check your corners six years into pubg mobile esports everyone is still susceptible to, to rookie mistakes at times we hey in the heat of the moment yes absolutely a lot going on here Sometimes you do forget those small things like that, and they can absolutely cost you. All right, so looking over here, we do have the Panthers not too far away from Extreme Slayers. They are looking in that direction, but nothing popping off there just yet. Yeah, I'm going to get an eye on the playing field. And right now, we are left with a little bit of a standstill. And yeah, it happens less so on Sandhawk, but this is still PUBG Mobile with large maps. I mean, yeah, this is a 6x6, six six, not a 8x8, eight eight, the usual larger. But 6x6 six six is still quite a bit of room to work with, especially when you can be as concealed uh, in a million different points of uh, cover here, be it the geographical high grass, the boulders, the trees, or just the massive abundance of buildings. So yeah, that it is still going to leave us with a potential for downtime. But as we're seeing now, extreme slayers driving northbound into the threat oh, that is yes. INF. You are absolutely right. Oh, Minato gets hit there by Jiyu or Hayuya who got the vehicle on him. Let's see. And INF with the ambush here, really, really doing some damage with that. And not at all what Extreme Slayers wanted to see here, but that is why mm -hmm. you separate like that. Poppy Sour will be back here, will stay alive here. We'll keep the team going at least. And they're oh, not. Yeah, as you can see, Poppy Sour's a little salty. He's not backing off of that. A little sweet and sour there. All right. He is, yeah, for whatever reason, not trying to. Well, I get. I see what he's doing here. He's he's flanking left to use the geography for cover here, and that that makes sense. But meanwhile, we got Dauntless and SLR. SLR yep. being reduced down to their final hope, and Koi, like a fish out of water. Wow, we got shot here. Shot down. Nice job, Dauntless. They are definitely feeling good after taking down a team like SLR here, and they had some great positioning on them. They're not going to lose a single member in that. Oh, you say that, but the caster oh, curse is R7. Oh, no. Cog, for, <laughs> this is a terrible move, though. This is an absolute oh, sacrifice yes. of his of his team's placement points. Was I mean, it, was I it worth it for the one a limb? I don't think so. It, that's not best at all. case scenario. Yeah. Like, you know, it, realistically, he could have 
acquired some placement for his team and just reduced the, the amount of slack in the rope that they're going to have to make up for in the future. But now Dauntless, a little bit toxically, going to probably hunt him down or at least acquire a positioning in booty camp to actually gatekeep him. Yes, absolutely. That's a free point there. You, you always want those free points where you can get them. And, oh, they may be moving along here. No, I'm surprised. I think they yeah. debated it. I think there was a conversation, and they decided against it. Maybe they want some other positioning more here. Oh, we got – oh, no, that's Dark, dark Esports. esports. I, yeah, I've got eyes on Amrit right now, but he is down for the count, leaving things up in the hands of Naomi, D2, and Kalakar. Nice shots there. Chaka will finish off that last member. And let's see, Golden Eagle's in a fight right now, too. And this it's gonna be a right, zero to Eagles? one ended here, zero to one ended here soon. Yes, Golden Eagles and right. uh I got eyes on the Eagles then. Yeah, and Dark, yeah, they got a bit of space between them. It looks like Dark is gonna be able to maintain actually no, they're spreading out. Calicar is pretty far away from his two teammates holding the paradise in a two one split, but we've also got Titan working their way into yes, straight out of Nepal mm -hmm. with Doran at the forefront of this. We got WDNN sitting on the high ground looking out. Wolf is up here too. 9Z is behind this whole situation though. So if things really get crazy here, I anticipate a third Nade. party. Oh, nice damage. Yeah, but you were talking about geographical points of cover inactive, clinging to life, only saved by that boulder, reduced down to just above half health. But if it weren't for that rock, uh, he would have been down in the prone zone for sure. Yes, absolutely. That nade was too accurate. Straight out of Nepal, really holding positioning well here, but they're going to have to be aware of their back end. Yeah, that's a great point right there, Red Eyes, for sure. This could get very crazy very soon for these guys. Oh, man, look at King. Doran putting out some spray and pray nades, really hoping upon hope for that preliminary nade knock, something to build off of and push towards. But unfortunately, not a lick of connecting damage dished out. Not at all. And mm -hmm. yeah, look, I, I remember what you're saying, uh, straight out of Nepal, going to have to be aware of the, the back end here. And now they're very potentially going to turn into the deli meat of a peanut butter and trouble sandwich where Titan and uh, members of Dark Esports are the bread. And look at this. It's a third party, a fourth party, if you will, from 9Z off in the distance. And Titan Inactive is able to capitalize on it. Nice shots. Very, very good accuracy there. Absolutely laser them. But look at this. The spread of dead eyes, guys. A 2-1 split wide flank rotation. And it does pan out. De, De Leon taking out PZ and inactive. Oh, quickly on what the first an angle for here. What an angle from dead eyes, guys. Absolutely undercutting Titan where they are right now. And this is the last thing that they wanted to see here. Crow and Doran, the last two from Titan here in this one. All right. Well, at this point, Crow is about to be fed on a platter here. I think we're all going to be eating Crow here. If he is not able to get to a, somehow get out of this little rock in a hard place position. I mean, he has got nowhere to travel to that he is not going to be an Im immediately vulnerable at. With straight out in Nepal holding position behind him, his only hope is really if uh, Dark Esports kind of focuses on SON a little more heavily and they have to really devote their attention to Dark. That's the only way Crow may have a shot at rotating back, and that's only after he's able to eliminate the threat behind him in Dead Eyes. Yeah, right you are on that for sure. Oh, Dark has actually started to take on straight out of Nepal over here. All right, well, Let's see. as you see, 9Z getting the work in. Off in the distance, we got members of uh, Crow, I guess Crow making his, Crow and Doran making their final stands against Deadeyes. So much action here on the playing field. 
There really is a ton. Oh, and you know what? I didn't even see Doran was still in there. I thought Crow was the yep. last one from that squad. But yeah, Doran will stay alive after Crow does end up getting eliminated. You see straight on a pole are in trouble right now themselves. They've got WDNN Oof. down. Vortex is out as well. And they are dealing with 9Z on both sides of them here. And to add into these equations, we've also, in the, the time that we were just talking there, the Golden Eagles, only one eagle remains in the nest, my man, and he is just probably about to be eliminated as well from the dead zone. It's just going to be going to exemplify just how intense these late stage Sandhawk matches can get. We have literally 26 people across 11 teams on what is just the smallest possible zone here yeah. and literally only one string of buildings, four tiny buildings, I guess three buildings in a shack are the only walls of cover here. So it's going to come down to the geography in this end game to decide who wants it the most. Oh, 9Z just moved over and did end up crashing on straight on a pole to get the squad wipe on them. Good push. But now they're dealing with dead eyes guys behind them. Leon, sir, is able to get that knock and thirst on elite. Taking out one of those members, and this north side has just been chaotic to say the least. Yeah, this is pretty typical of a Sandhawk in game, especially uh, on the first day of a two day finals. You know, everyone is playing with some degree of reservation here. And as you can see, D2E, the final hope here for Dark Esports desperately trying to get a position where you can get a revive on Calicar, but that luxury is out the window and it is a DVS to send him back to the lobby. That is going to be a tough one for sure. Let's go see. We do have simple getting position above dead eyes over here towards the Northeast side. Dead eyes were the one of the ones who took out that nine Z member. So they are really trying to gatekeep, really trying to get themselves in a good position ahead of them. Let's see what's happening here. Simple. We also have Rusher 7 not too far away. There's actually a few, maybe one of them. Uh, no, actually, Ecog is the only solo here in this one. Yeah, and that is going to mean, you know, we were talking about it in round one. If you are a solo at this stage of an end game, your best bet is to just lay low under the radar. Let these numbers dwindle. Try to acquire uh, as much placement as you can. And at this point, every team that's eliminated is extra points on the board for them. So it is the odds of him being able to acquire numerous squad wipes you know that's not very high but the odds of being able to stay alive 30 seconds longer and enjoy that two uh point boost that's a realistic way of contributing to the team at this end game as a solo definitely and that's how you gotta have to play it you have to change your your mindset there and i'm sure they have done that oh 9z is ahead of the panthers here Chaco just got a quick knock and thirst they were making their way up Chaco gets hit hard in the back by that solo who goes down right afterwards to uh scream zoo so we are at four teams left now here. It's getting crazy. 9Z, who have themselves in the middle of the zone, are getting picked apart. Chaco got hit on this other end. Yeah, and it does seem like Beast uh, being cornered like a beast here, and trying desperately to fight between multiple members of 9Z and then the blue zone behind them. <laughs> oh, and that's it for them. Yes. Yeah. And this deed is done. This and is, he makes it look so simple. It really does. This is looking good for the Panthers coming in as a three man now. Uh, 9Z got undercut a little bit there. And I think Simple is the last one standing, although they should be able to come and get Shaco picked up. And let's see. All right. Wow. This is honestly a huge. Uh, opportunity wasted i don't want to say a mistake per se but an opportunity wasted 9z should not really have had the opportunity to secure that revive being that blinky was facing in their direction i mean granted he doesn't have the line of sight but they did know about the knock and at that stage they can read the number of players left on the field it seems like a, a real opportunity wasted and now 9z able to snake their way in here yeah, and I'm uh, with how they were just playing a few minutes ago. I'm surprised they just, they shifted their strats so hard. They were 
right in the middle of a few different teams running around playing it very confidently oh simple with, and, the, with yep. the shoddy and we'll get the one the and that one is two. going to exemplify you know kr had an opportunity to pick off the remains instead they allowed for 9z to be resurrected here simple being nated down leaving everything's in the hands of chaco chaco making his final stand great three shots from chaco it's a 1v1 to decide this one now happy tree stay boy, has if made. you ever if you ever expect a team to thrive in the jungle, you, it would be a panther, right? I mean, without question, <laughs> especially this panther team, because they dropped their 44, 34 limbs. I believe it was on Sam. Actually, no, it was on uh, Aaron Gold. Chaco tried to throw his pan at him. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, this is a battle of patience at this point. But Papi Triste with a DBS, the DBS, the most unforgiving close quarter weapon in the I, I, I'd say the most abundant close quarter weapon uh, for the the least forgivings here. I guess mm -hmm. technically you could you could put it up against an MK, and, and then that can be up for debate. But I still think the DBS might be a quicker oh, yeah. ending. <laughs> I mean, for what we were seeing from some players earlier in the tournament too, the DBS Wancho, I'm thinking of Wancho yesterday, was going off for ICU. Longer range DBS shots. I mean, he was making some good ones. I don't know how this is going to go. They're going to make they're going to make the zone. Or they're going to let the zone kind of decide how they're going to play it. At least Poppy Tree stay. The next zone, with it, both of these guys are in it. Well, what this tells me is like, tell me you have no utilities without telling me you have no utilities. <laughs> yeah. uh, Poppy Tree stay. He actually, as I say that, I think Chaco picked up some from the crate next to him and is cooking one up. Poppy Triste, here's the nade oh! pull, but he is not oh! able to clutch it. Oh, wow. Nicely done. Great, great toss there. 9Z will grab the win here in round three there. Putting up a total of 15 eliminations. Woo! Yeah, that is nothing to wag your finger at, especially when you have a chicken dinner on the tip of your tongue finish to add on to it. That is a 25-point takeaway from this one round alone. And, you know, give them credit. Put it into perspective. You know, the Panthers, as great of an effort as it was, ain't nothing wrong with Silver, but Silver with only three Elims, hey, that's 11 points. That's not even a bad gain for one game, but put it in perspective up to 9Z, it is literally a 14 point or pardon me, a 15 point differential. No, 14 point differential. Yeah, I yep. can do math. Um, <laughs> but yes. So, yeah, I mean, a phenomenal performance on nine Z's end and not the first one that we've seen. And uh, this makes them a very formidable threat here for for teams like, you know, the Panthers and, uh, you know, extreme slayers who may not have really expected that much pressure from a qualifying team. That's a great point right there. I mean, they did come in at 9Z. We watched them in the last chance lobby the last few days, and they did really well. They they came out strong in day one. They let off the pedal a little bit in day two, but they did still have a good enough performance to make it in there. And now they're coming in strong, letting, just like I said earlier, they built that momentum from the last chance round, and they're back in. And you know what, Red Eyes? This is now three teams from the last chance, three that have gotten the win here from grand finals. Well, this, is, <laughs> this is three teams that, that have literally had to had to put their blood sweat and tears in very recently they, they literally uh, have been duking it out over the previous two days over the last stage i mean these are teams who really had to earn their keep and and earn their place here so they've got everything to lose um you know in comparison to to, to teams who may be kind of spoon fed these opportunities these guys had to claw their way to the top to get here and boy to say that they are warmed up and feeling loose is an understatement with a 25 point takeaway that in in perspective is essentially two strong matches of performances points added together um, it's going to be a real, real hurdle if the rest of the playing field allows them to uh, continue building on this momentum that they've already started in just these few matches alone. I mean, I, I think of it like a snowball at the top of a hill. And 9Z, you know, we're starting to build up a, a little bit of momentum after those first two. But at this point, it is turning into a cannonball here that if they're not, the rest of the playing field is not careful it's going to become an unstoppable force. If if even three more matches of wins happen today, it's going to make tomorrow uh, almost a a runaway. Yes, and we ourselves, I we love to see underdog comebacks. We love when the action is close and tight knit. Um, so it could come down to that. It could come down to hey, 
a battle for second. But if somebody doesn't knock the king of the hill off their rocker soon, it might be too late. That's a great point right there. By for tomorrow, sure. it could be. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, we, we're I hope these teams were watching the previous rounds. I hope they were doing their homework. If they did, they can get some tendencies on what's happening here. These teams were all playing in those previous rounds. We showcased them a lot. So if they did their homework, some of these teams that are in grand finals, they may have had some good previews on how to anticipate going against these teams or other things like that. Um, but yeah, definitely the takeaway from this one, our last chance teams have been coming in strong, winning the first three out of six here in this grand final day one. I mean, what if this is like a runaway grand finals where just everyone who had to claw their way here, you know, could be the ones who put out that, 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 that performance that we expected from the tier one professionals. Maybe this could be a little, uh, fire uh fire under the butt here because you know if you're a team like you know the panthers or extreme slayers everyone's expecting you to put on the show and if all the viewers are expecting it of you and you're getting you know not really able to to get that chicken dinner i think uh we've all seen the memes it, you know from the PUBG mobile community we've we've all seen alpha seven catching a lot of meme loving lately no one wants to be on the tail end of looking bad to this community so hey i i mean if some up and comers some tier two or two tier three brackets can to, can knock you off your rocker maybe it's time to uh go back to the drawing board and uh re-strategize Absolutely. Well said there for sure. Um, this is going to be a good one to see how these teams are going to play. That is absolutely could be a reality check for some if they do find that they're not really playing as well as they wanted to against some of these really, really good teams that pre-qualified, maybe not pre-qualified, but did really well early on in the tournament and kind of uh, notched in their grand final spot. But yeah, definitely curious to see on how round four is going to go, guys. We do have uh three more rounds ahead of us we're gonna go ahead jump to some replays from the last one get ourselves in this next lobby and we'll see y'all very soon for the start of round four back on erringal
Okay, coming back in to start round four, guys. Here are your standings. And oh. looking interesting here for sure. Well, this is a big surprise. Yeah, um, I for some reason, I had seemed to think that Dead Eyes guys would have held a, a bit more prominent of a lead, more than, certainly more than a two-point gap between themselves and second. But apparently, we have a much closer fight on our hands than we first preemptively thought here. Absolutely. Oh, and we've already got oh, we fights got happening here. Yes, we do. Let's go check it out. It is Titan Gaming on INF here out in La Polka. Just a and quick this peek at is that. gonna spell trouble. PZ down, inactive, almost returned the favor on on Minotaur. He does get the takedown right then and there. And now we have ourselves a two v two scenario currently. If he's not able to get the revive on PZ, but it looks like he probably will. INF a bit hesitant here, understandably so, as it is very early on. Ooh, nice shots from under Bad resources. Boy. Does get the oh, knock wow. there on Doran. And they do have Jadon as well in their back pocket and coming in from the off angle. Yes, they do. I think INF definitely has an advantage here. Doran is down. They already lost Crow earlier, who we saw soon doing some great things. So that is definitely a heavy blow. Well, even more so here. Now we got a weakened PZ, just one building over from Jadon. Jadon coming up from an off angle that may end up catching inactive and Doran unawares. Let's see. You can see they are falling back. They're desperate for, for heals right now. You can tell they don't have too much to use. Yeah. Everyone's low on resources, mm -hmm. ammo, armor. This is to be the early stage uh, fight kind of the, the 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 conundrum with it but the benefit of it is you know hey as under you you under resourced as you are so is very likely so is your opponent yes right you are for sure it's only so much loot that can be grabbed off the break obviously you might get a little bit lucky but you you probably will be short on something else even if you get lucky getting a gun maybe you don't have that vest maybe you don't have a helmet Whatever it is, I think INF did get a little bit better luck here on this drop, but we actually see a 3v3 right here right now. So it's not quite one team in control, especially now that Inactive and have backed off. You see, they are healed up here. And it looks like Rushers and Dauntless going to go at it in the distance. Tell you what, I'll catch a, an angle on that um, just to make sure we don't miss out on any significant action. Actually, I'm looking at the, the playing field and... Uh, yeah, okay, I see it. All right. <clears throat> All right, Inactive did end up getting a nice nade over here on one of those INF members. And I think this is the main fight, main skirmish going on right now. I don't see too much else on the, uh, the kill yeah. feed. Is that right, Red Eyes? Oh, we, no, no, we got North uh, George Dauntless uh, facing off against Rushers. Oh, and that's become a normal thing here, hasn't it? Okay. Yep. I've got perspective on it as we speak. I'm not sure how that video quality has improved. I hope it has. Um, we will jump into it. I'm actually going to get that sorted here in a second, but I will jump up to that for now. Let's go check oh, out what's happening. Sorry. <laughs> no, no worries at all. All right. We got Vito cooking up a utility. Oh, I see. We're still on a... Okay. Here we go. Well, here we go. The yes. fiddler on the roof has been taken down a peg, and that's going to put a real hurt in here on the final hope for Dauntless, which is going to be Claws pushing outwards to try to capitalize on this knock. And this is going to be a realistically, tough one. yeah, he's he's clinging to a M16, uh, not the ideal secondary, but with a UMP. Oh, swapping it out for an S12. Now that could be something to change the tides as we've seen several times today. Definitely. I love that S12 so much in those tight range situations. The DBS is good too, but that little double, the, the two shot isn't the best to go against like a full squad. If you get that S12, it can be, oh, 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 oh gets one knock, but not able to get much more than that. And Dauntless will Ooh, end up getting eliminated here. Injury. Yes. Insult on the injury. Shots to the crate. Sent him back to lobby with a message in hand. And now the zone has shifted. And look at it, Beans. It is a absolute oh, monstrosity wow. of it's a play similar, zone for the it's participants. It's similar to what we saw the, la the, the first Aaron match. Very similar. And it looks like we might have 9Z driving southwest bound into the Golden Eagles, potentially. Let's see this. Yes. Could be very interesting here between these two.
Okay, guys, so just having a look now. We do have these two teams kind of rotating in past one another. Golden Eagles, NA, and 9Z well, looking directly at one or another. Or my face. It's just my face that's showing. Oh, no, you're good. Sorry, that's my studio mode. You're good. <laughs> so we are set here, guys. All goody. Well, that that's a little freebie. A little something, something. <laughs> All right, but we have Dark Esports and SLR. Now, this is exactly, if you take a look at the map, uh, Dark Esports really getting in good positioning uh, with the Primorse position, not having to really account for basically 180 degrees or ha almost half the play zone. But all the while, we got the Eagles landing on top of 9Z. Looks like 9Z a bit spread out. Yes, absolutely. And I'm surprised that they are. Well, I guess I shouldn't be surprised with, how, with what we saw from them in Last Chance and the way that they do play it. Uh, yes, this is kind of their go-to. We are looking at them kind of peeking at golden eagles here ked was over in the distance does end up moving back scream zoom moving in that direction though and i think we are going to see something big happen here between no maybe not though no not yet we, we cast her cursed all right i'm trying to catch a scouting here it looks like we are left with a bit of a spread we talked about it in round one um you know certainly since tends to be par for the course here on larger maps and Aaron Gale is no exception to that, but we've got nine Z currently sandwiched in between two heavy hitters of golden Eagles and Lotus Esports, cotton between a rock and a hard place. And both rock and hard place are tier one professional teams. Hey guys, there's my face again. It's a good face, I think. And uh, we're getting eyes on Rana and Dooku. For everyone just wondering why we keep switching in there, no, no, don't uh, worry, both don't of worry. us are providing no, no. camera angles in. It's all good. It's all good because studio mode's up. So I, can't I'm a really it. big fan of, I think, you know, also it's important to show my face intermittently. Um, <laughs> just course. to remind everyone. Hey, yes, while there is action on the playing field, don't forget about red eyes. All right. It looks like, yeah, 9Z and Golden Eagles just tempting each other here. Almost getting at each other's toes and then turning turning tail and reconsidering as you can see uh the spread on dooku and jawoon from their third teammate rana a little bit of space separating them in that two one split and all things considered it, it's going to amount to nothing as their opponent drives away lotus just trying to get a new positioning in this zone understandably so but with a real opportunity to gatekeep the likes of dead eyes yeah let's see if this is going to happen here with these two absolutely have each other in their, in their sights dead eyes guys taking position on this hill to look over top of that compound and let's have a look and see oh blade taking shot big shot there at drago Okay, so Dead Eyes guys moving back over, and it does look like they are feeling confident to move forward and take this one compound. Yeah, they are going to be comfortable there. Although this is on the edge of zone, they're definitely going to have to move forward here. SLR moving up to yeah. towards S uh, towards Golden Eagles. Yeah, well, SLR is kind of getting themselves. Well, they what what seems to be great positioning, and it's not bad at all. Primorsk, there and uh, for both Primorsk and Fairy Pier hold a huge benefit given the map layout with so much water being occupied. SLR believes that by holding the Fairy Pier edge that they won't really have to uh, watch their backside as much. And generally, that is a pretty safe bet. Unfortunately for them, Dark Esports is going to be occupying Primorsk and could catch that line on SLR from behind. So realistically, SLR is kind of in the Bermuda Triangle of Golden Eagles, Dark Esports, and Extreme Slayers. I guess the, the diamond, because you can add Lotus to that equation as well. Yes, definitely. Definitely a great point there for sure. This uh, this next map or this next zone is very, very interesting for these teams as they're getting themselves out here. Mm -hmm. Hold on one second, though. I'll let you take that away. Uh, All right. Guys. Yeah, so... 
currently, uh, yeah, we got. So we're just trying to get all these cams set up correctly here. Uh, I believe you're capturing the video ninja. We should just be getting the restream. We're so Rusher Seven, yeah. Let's just we'll worry about it later. Mm -hmm. Rusher Seven could be actually putting themselves in a bit of a conundrum as well, driving southbound towards SLR and sandwiched in between the Golden Eagles and Extreme Slayers. As you can see, Golden Eagles have started to get a line of sight on the opposition. But boy, talk about patience. The Eagles are not quick to, to, to act hastily. They are making sure that their line of sight is good before uh, taking their shots. They want to make sure they have that knock set in stone before they give up their positioning. Yeah, absolutely. They are definitely, definitely prioritizing this high ground here. No surprise there for sure. Oh, 9Z and NS though. Let's go check that out. And let's see, who was it? Simple, I think, was uh, the one exchanging fire with them. All right. Um, yeah, it does seem that 9Z, you know, who certainly, who certainly has performed at an uh, elevated level, but not as elevated as we thought at the end of the last match, you know, realistically. They're only in a two-point lead at this point, so they are understandably a bit more hesitant than we expected them coming into round three. But regardless, we've got multiple fights on the playing field. Looks like KR may be facing off against extreme slayers off in the distance. All the while, 9Z driving close to an opposition on the edge of zone. Poppy Sour taking a knock from members of Dark Esports, all the while the Golden Eagles putting the work in on Nemesis. Okay, interesting. Let's go ahead and have a look then over at Nemesis real fast. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. All right, well, Naomi... Putting in her shots, making her final stand, and it's all down to Calicar for Dark Esports in that conundrum. This little love triangle standoff here. Dark Esports Calicar is at this point the final hope, and that hope is gone. Oozed away as KR Esports annihilates them and acquire their first two Elims of the game, but no time to celebrate as they focus in on Extreme Slayers and nades thrown back in retaliation. Ooze reduced down to one-fifth of his overall health, desperately in need of heals. Looks like Mela's and Wish are going to be at the forefront now. Mela's cooking up a nade, but having to dodge utilities thrown back at him. And this is an interesting standoff here. Extreme Slayers with the numbers in their favor here, but with the back end vulnerable to SLR. Yes, indeed. You see Koi's got that high angle or that, that high ground right now moving up. Here's the shots from that direction for sure. Although there is a little bit of tree cover blocking them right now. Let's see. All right. Yeah, I, I do like the positioning that KR it, was trying to utilize with them, but with that back end threat of SLR, I do think uh, it should add a little bit of a panic factor for both of these teams, and in particular, uh, Extreme Slayers, who who really is going to be having the tougher time evacuating uh, and evading SLR in this situation. But for someone like Ooze, who is holding position on members of Extreme Slayers, it's almost a certain death Ooh, if he's not. Oh, great shots from as I say it, As I say it, I, I choke on my words, but Ooze had one opportunity to surprise, and that opportunity's done. And now the nades and hellfire crash on him, and he is burning bright. Sent back to lobby, and that is K, or pardon me, KR Esports reduced down to Mela's and Wish and still stuck in this little love triangle here with SLR. Oh, and SLR has started to take okay. their shots as well now, I see. Yeah. Let's go. It looks like they are going to be pushing up here. Huo Xuan going to go ahead and join Kindness on their way in.
still here in position. Extreme Slayers are going to grab their vehicles, move around. All right. So, yes, this is going to be an SLR Extreme Slayers standoff here. And, yes, Huozon already keeping the pressure. That is SLR's first elim of the match, surprisingly enough. But with Huo pushing forward, it could be the beginning of an onslaught. I'm sorry. I was just taking a little bit surprised there. Oh, you're good. Definitely uh, surprising I, here. I was just he caught off guard at SLR outnumbering the Extreme Slayers and then still bowing out. Yeah, very surprised that. that on not that. expected. Mm -hmm. Huo Shuan's going to move straight over towards White Elegy instead. They must have identified Lotus Esports in the area and they want to get a view in that direction. And all the while, Eagles, Panthers, straight out of Nepal fighting. We have uh, Extreme Slayers, SLR fight, and then Lotus and KR fighting as well. Three simultaneous points of contestation with 10 teams remaining spread across 29 people. And just as I say it, the Panther strikes an Eagle. Oh, yes. There's definitely a few fights. Where is the Panthers at? I definitely have them oh, on my radar as well yes it's them against titan gaming oh jair i think is the name is got the knock on that titan gaming member i believe that's a titan third party push that is i believe yes. it was the golden eagles and the panthers facing off just a moment ago and now uh, you know the titans coming in trying to take advantage on the already weakened teams and capitalize maybe snag any potential third party kill steals if possible Yes, you are absolutely right about that. I think uh, think they are regretting that push on that now, though. They pushed up. Adoran suddenly the last one left from Titan Gaming NA. And we do still have these other members of Panthers and Golden Eagles next to each other in this compound. Oh, man. There is quite a bit going on here. The zone moving in. It's going to be interesting on this next shift without question. Take a look at Chaco of 9Z's positioning. High ground in Full swing, and literally, if you can hit that map button one more time just for, for the analysis. Absolutely. Literally, 9Z does not have to watch the entire back end behind mm -hmm. him. And ironically enough, the entire playing field is in the bottom half of that zone. So 9Z, with the high ground overwatch over literally every other team on here with exception to r7 who is in that little minefield and the only way r7 can rotate out of there is to put themselves in the the path of vulnerability to 9z and sentinels yeah not a great spot there for sure they're they're most likely gonna have to just stay put right now and just pray for the best well 9z going to e exemplify really using the the playing field to your advantage as best as possible and especially towards an in-game zone where if you take a look at the map there's literally like one uh section of buildings and that's where r7 is occupying outside of that and this position between the panthers and the eagles there's really not a lot of wall cover at all in the remainder of this zone so that high ground is basically you know that that that's the uh the premium real estate yes. for the zone at without, this stage without and question mm -hmm. if any if there was ever a team that really didn't need that luxury uh it would be 9z so realistically teams like titan panthers and eagles should be contesting for prime real estate here and they think they are they definitely are here, especially with that next shift here. We see these guys from SLR moving up now over towards BIS Sentinels. And then I'm expecting this west side of the zone to get a little bit uh, get pretty crazy here, especially with Lotus coming in now too and KR Esports. A lot of teams in this area looking at one another. This is gonna be tricky. Uh, you know, for, for someone like 9Z, really no nothing needs to be done they don't need to uh push forward they don't need to put themselves out in any vulnerable peaks they've already got a really good positioning and overall placement bracket at this point they're one team uh elimination away from getting placement points at this point 9z is ready to lay low let the numbers dwindle and then pick off the remains and they're in the perfect positioning for third party uh steals especially on the likes of the Panthers, the Eagles, or Titan. Yes, definitely a great point there. Definitely a great point. 
Oh, we do have some action up here on the northeast side now, or northwest side, excuse me. SLR. Is that SLR and Sentinels? It is indeed uh, taking shots at one another. Yeah, and SLR still just a two piece of kindness and whoa. And interestingly enough, you know, SLR, one of the top performing, at least highest expectation uh, teams here in this event, really enjoying the slow play here. And I shouldn't say enjoying at this point, as if they got caster cursed by it and now reduced <laughs> down to their final hope. Whoa. I got to say, but Red Eyes, you've got, you've got a skill with that for sure. We've I, called I, out a few times and seen someone go out standing. right afterwards. <laughs> I am actually going to be taking um, bribes from tier one teams uh, in terms of who I cast or curse for Super League. So make all payments forwardable to PayPal. <laughs> all right. Well, if you are quo i mean realistically what everything that i said that applying to 9z should apply even more so to slr's quo he had that high ground overwatch position except he's a solo he has even less defense and manpower in his favor so realistically no one needs to be laying low more than quo and especially with the zone shift favoring him the least any attention drawn to him at this point is detrimental that's a great point. And Lotus are definitely, definitely keeping an eye in that direction. Casper and them sending shots upwards towards them. And it's going to be interesting. They're making all this noise. We do have BIS Sentinels sitting up ahead of them. I'm surprised the Sentinels did not try to engage them at all. They are only a two man. Yeah, we've been seeing a very slow playing Sentinels uh, all of today, you know, but it hasn't paid out terrible form at all i mean you know as a three-piece we have seen them get some reasonable placement there and now i mean keep in mind yes they did just start off as a three-piece but they still have two of those three members up and a little bit of well odds even a little bit of the odds even right then and there unintentionally from a third party but now slr has the opportunity to drive in on him. Let's see if Ho Shuan's going to try to push that. I've seen him yeah, play he confident wouldn't. As a solo, like why would he? He, uh, Yep, you're right. He is going to kind of stay low here. Does get just on the inside of that zone. Well, why wouldn't... Let's, let's talk about what is a little bit more frustrating. I understand why Huo might not be on the aggressing side. We were just talking about the reasons for him to be conservative. But if you are Sentinels and watching two unsuspecting enemies even as a two-piece driving right next to you and not taking those shots this is a i mean yes re reservation and, and conservative gameplay there's always a place for it but you can't be afraid to take on your your fights no you, not it's at just, all i've never seen a team win an overall event with passive and conservative gameplay the entirety of it that's just not realistic so while sentinels are getting good placement with only one Elim to add to that, it's not going to be overwhelming numbers without a top three finish. They really would need to start going off right now, and I'm sure they have to notice that, especially with how poorly they did in round one because of the disconnect and the solo player. They got to wake up and try to do something here. This is your perfect opportunity. You know you have more than a few teams in the area, and we do hear some shots coming in from Jit now. Oh, Ho Shuan did just get eliminated there. That's it for Super Lazy Reflex. Well, SLR eliminated in fifth place but realistically uh, given uh that they had been reduced down to a weakened uh two piece pretty early on and then reduced down to a solo in that final uh stage i i think ain't nothing really wrong with a fifth place finish under those circumstances but they are gonna have to really impress us moving forward if we're going to be seeing the slr that we expected moving forward they're going to have some serious ground to cover up yes you're absolutely right i mean when it was the survival of the fittest lobby they were just playing just very very well had a lot of eliminations total they they were absolutely um a dominant team back then we've seen it we haven't quite seen that effort here today from them but obviously still a few more rounds left here in this one and obviously yeah. all of day two tomorrow too and it's a marathon not a sprint no one wants to be given up any easy opportunities. As we said at the beginning of the day, you can kind of expect that slower play at the very least in the first half of day one. And I think we might see the pace pick up considerably, um, you know, in matches five and six. I think uh, anything could really happen, but we did kind of, if, if the last chance stage is any indicator for us, then yeah, the first day, um, 
uh, other than, you know, a, a team like 9Z, uh, the first day was a pretty underwhelming one. And then amounting to a finale on day two that just unmatched. Yes, I mean, it was it was a kind of a night and day difference for sure. Oh, Illusion pushes up here and does get the knock on Spookies, but gets taken out right afterwards. The Panthers are actually successful with that push. And here we go. Sentinels are waking up. They're getting some knocks now. Oh, yeah. And, and this is going to be an interesting. We're down to a th uh, three teams remaining, a 3v2v2, three v two. Sentinels, Panthers, and 9Z. And what's interesting enough to note is that 9Z has uh, made it to this end stage yet again. So, yes, while other teams can be performing well, um, we saw what happens when 9Z is not put in check in the last chance stages. Uh, this is a team that definitely needs to be tracked down and hunted down early game, it seems, for them to not get to placement stages. Yes, 100%. They, I mean, they, they've got this down to a science. And, you know, it happens one match, sure, you can call it, you know, a lucky match. Happens two matches, yeah, you know, anything can happen. But if it happens every single match where they're making these top three placements, no matter what, it is points in their favor and a lot of detriment to the rest of the playing field. They only have a two point lead uh, currently, but that gap is probably going to be widened if they continue to get this placement alone. Definitely. The fact they only have five limbs here, but they're going to get those solid placement points. And I don't think we really saw any other team come out with a crazy amount of eliminations this round, surprisingly. Yeah. And what's interesting to note here is this, that high ground that nine Z occupied, uh, early on, and we were talking about the advantage over, you know, the compound holders by the high ground holders in 9Z. Well, they have not had to shift much at all, actually. Mm -hmm. 9Z has been able to hold that high ground position for the entirety from stage four on to eight, I think, either if not stage four, then stage five. But for three or four uh, stage shifts, they have held on to this high ground overwatch position and haven't lost a single member in the process. Add on to that, they have five elims. They're able to slowly add on to it. They they did lose what? elite, but it was just it was just that one member here. So yes, yeah, but I believe elite was lost early on on the drop. Yes, I think uh, you're right. And mm -hmm. so realistically, nine Z has not lost anyone since gaining and acquiring that Overwatch position. And it's been a great now, shift for sure. Mm -hmm. Granted, as everyone is up on the high ground, that high ground advantage is not so advantageous anymore. But why would they need to compromise their position per se? I mean, there. What's what is their position not have that Sentinels? or the Panthers has nothing, nothing at all. You're they right. have all the same advantages and disadvantages. Oh my gosh. Just, I don't know if it. you saw just that. Dodge that. Yes, indeed. Woo! Simple. Try to get jit. And that was a, uh, that was a good dodge there. Oh my goodness. Chris taking some damage from these nades and then jit of, Oh, he's oh, done for. Oh, oh nice. Nade from Poppy tree stay. And Chris is and just, I know I was watching your angle mm. and mine and mine. I was spectating jit. So I literally watched the nade just falling oh. towards the space oh that's gotta be done <laughs> poor jit oh geez so bi sentinels do end up taking third place in this one but not with too many limbs at all hey i mean at the same time entering as a three piece you know you're you're limited in in some capabilities if you're not a hyper aggressive team and uh you know like we we, we have seen back in the days of the pittsburgh knights three pieces just laying out onslaughts but that's not you know gonna happen for every team and if you aren't as comfortable in your CQC altercations, that's okay. Know where your strengths lie. And if acquiring placement is one of those strong suits, by all means, prioritize that before you go out of your comfort zone. Yes, 100%. Poppy three stays could be in trouble. But Ooh, no. That nade just went down the hill. It was very close, though, for sure. Let's see. Simple here sitting above just knows they're in there. Nice nade. Shaco. Does get that? Look at Poppy Tree stays HP right now. Oh my gosh! Oh. And stuck in between a rock and a hard place. Hellfire crashes. Boom! He does get the heal off, but no. Nine Z gonna grab another win here. Wow! Mm. Solid performance from them this round. Let's see how many limbs they dropped. Seven total for this one. Well, uh, you know, and this was probably. Uh, the best way to summarize the 9Z strategy that we have seen from them today. Uh, not really as reflective of their performance on day one of the last stage or the last chance because they really were, if this looks aggressive to our viewers, 9Z was 
much more aggressive in the last chance stage. Understandably, they're up against a higher degree of competition now, but they are consistently chipping away here. And even in those final moments, they were able to acquire those last two elims. They were able to take away a 17-point gain from this round alone. That is, I mean, this is a team that entered this match already in first place, just adding on. Remember, as I was talking about the snowball effect here, and at, at some point, this snowball is going to acquire too much weight to slow down. Yes, well said for sure. These guys are building up their momentum very similar to what we saw here in the last chance lobby from the last few days from them. They really are just kind of getting right back to where they were and uh, really having their way with this lobby a little bit right now for two in a row. I mean, yeah, I mean, it, I, it's well, when it's not two in a row, even the ones that that, that aren't instant dubs, I mean, they're, they're getting great placement and this is a problem for not just the second place holders, but the entirety of, of the playing field. Um, and this is exactly what we said in the last chance stage. It got to a point where we said, if anyone wants, uh, you know, a shot, it's not going to be about competing against the other teams at some point, at some point you have to say, well, the only way we're going to be able to get to those other teams and it have it matter is to take out, the heavy hitting kings of the hill in 9z first if they are able to become the outlier team and as we saw in the last stage day before entering day two they literally doubled second place's points if something like that becomes a repeat scenario then it is going to be a, a matter of okay we need to actively pursue seek them out and eliminate them very early on before they're able to do what 9z does best and that is lay a slaughterhouse yes and i love to see it i mentioned it in chat earlier but 9z is one of these teams that doesn't they don't qualify for pmsl they can't because they're yeah. a latin team so they're just playing for the money right now that's the big but thing they're going for the prize not just the money man uh the the money and the message go. that goes yes. with it the, the pride the the, rights <laughs> which in the pro circuit of PUBG mobile esports it means cons just a lot and uh you 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 read the discord chats between some of these teams and boy the the it ha it almost has to be that level of competition where it does get to that borderline toxic level the only way you're going to be hyper successful at a professional level is you have to be a a little bit overly competitive so it is pretty interesting to see these teams you know who constantly duke it out against each other who learn each other's play styles so thoroughly to see how how they are able to react and respond to an outlier like 9z definitely a great point right there excited to see what these teams are going to do here in these last two rounds again well last two rounds of the day still plenty more ahead but i'm going to keep a close eye on titan gaming in this one they've shown spurts of of glory like they usually do but it's been short-lived here in a lot of these um, <laughs> a dash uh, yeah, a dash just a, just dash. a sprinkle it <laughs> not too much not not too much just, just enough to add a little flavor <laughs> exactly so it's going to be interesting to see guys the next two rounds let's see where we do have up next for these teams it is going to be on miramar back to the desert back to the long Whoa. range ones uh long yep. range map here at least so destiny in the desert my man well stick around ladies and gentlemen we'll be back at you with a little bit more of the pmci grand finals day one in just a few short moments stick around we'll be back soon
Okay, welcome back everybody. Glad to have you here. Thank you for your patience. We are having a look at our overall standings right now and quite the standings in front of us right now. Yeah, give it to 9Z. A little bit of a little bit of credit here. They are as we said at the end of last match, continuing to chip away at this lead here and, you know, a 2-point lead before that last match ended up turning into a 10-point gain over the Dead Eyes guys. And that is where things start to get a little bit more tightly packed here as Dauntless literally only leads the Panthers uh, in uh, by third place to fourth place by one point. And the same can be said from the Panthers to SLR, only one point separating them. And with, you know, in perspective, fifth place, literally only five points behind second, it is going to be a contest. But again, if this becomes a scenario where 9Z is able to continue this consistent momentum, it it's going to be a battle for second if if the remainder of the playing field can't really adjust and and react to that and by that i mean you know hunting the big bad wolf yeah great point we've got action here starting now guys let's go ahead and jump into it and see what we're looking at the plane path was north to south these teams are already boots on the ground and we've got dauntless and lotus esports already exchanging fire here out in pozo area yeah I, it looks to be Lotus already reduced down to a two-piece of Fishy and Drago. And as you can see, Drago hasn't even touched grass yet. Oh, he is no. just now hitting down, and he is done for, I think, from what I was seeing on my feed. Yes, he is in hot pursuit. He does acquire an S18 just in time, but coming in under oh, equipped, oh, no armor to speak of, and just swarmed on. Yes, absolutely. Lotus is going to be knocked down to one member now after that. We've also got KR Esports exchanging fire somewhere else. Where is that going yeah, on? Yeah, the southeastern portion. I put the yes. Baicio yes. up against the likes of the Panthers. And all the while, R7 and 9Z up in the northern portion. Now, that is something I'm going to have to keep oh, an extra oh, eye on, too. 100%. Ooh, Moso. But, oh, yeah. Really no, we're going to keep work. it here. We're going to keep it right here in this area. Moso did end up just getting that knock. And with no health to speak of either. Wow. Tell you what, you keep eyes on this and I will, I'll relay any info that happens uh, elsewhere. He actually does look like they are fighting. Uh, 9Z able to get another takedown on R7 off in the distance. I know we're not watching it just yet, but no, I well, think that's it a good is one. I think it's that action. is a good one to check yeah. out for sure. We got to see what's happening with these two teams. Both of them last chance uh, teams that were able to get back in it. And Rusher 7 down to two members now here. And I think it's only Spooky in the area. Yeah. And the irony of being on a team named Rushers and then running away. It's a tough pill to swallow. But at that point, if you are uh, 
R7, you don't really have a lot of options when uh, you're already reduced down to half of your starting lineup or even potentially the solo. I have to go double check uh, their current standings. Oh, nope, they, it is just spooky. Yep, it was uh, just spooky. Yep, indeed it was. I think Vito's just got taken out by the BIS Sentinels not too far away from here over to the south. And that is definitely going to hurt Rusher 7's odds in this match five. Yeah, that's a tough, uh, tough start to to the match for sure. But no time to waste at all because still the Panthers and KR Esports on the southeastern front, as well as numerous potential points of contestation in the northern portion of the zone between, uh, I guess, Nemesis, Sentinels, and R7. But we have just too many points of action right now. Yes, there's definitely a lot going on here. Surprised to see it for Miramar with how slow it can be sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this has been an interesting one. These teams came out ready to fight. And it yeah, this is going to be interesting to see how this plays out because KR, you know, a team that has historically, you know, performed at a pretty elevated level, really catching uh, a, a draft of bad luck here to start this match off as the Panthers literally swarming on their final opponent, Ooze. Ooze catching him with the UMP 45, getting a quick takedown, falling Good back to a position shot. to cover. Oh, man. And, uh, hey, he knew he was done for, but he was able to secure a thirst and almost get a knock on Poppy Triste. Give, give a little credit where credit is due, but also let's, let's commend the Panthers with a little bit of a golf clap because they've already brought themselves up to four elims. Wow. Didn't come without paying a pretty hefty price though. Losing half of their starting lineup in stage one is certainly going to have to change up their strategy for the remainder of this match. They're not going to be able to go out actively hunting as they were previously. Uh, these Panthers are going to have to hold down the fort and play a bit slower. And if anything, really kind of capitalize on acquiring placement gain and maybe some at best case third party uh elim steals in the later fourth or fifth higher ending stage um other right than that, that. For sure. yeah because e even with four elims being eliminated before the placement bracket is going to be a huge 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 knockback definitely we're looking over at slr above dark esports here while we were checking the end of that uh panthers fight out it is SLR above Dark Esports, really putting some big damage on them. Amrit is pinned down here, has some smoke out on his position. Kindness has moved up around though. Great, great flank here. Great position to get right up above Amrit. And Dark Esports will end up losing that solo or that one member of theirs. They're down to three. The rest of them did end up backing off there. You can see they are taking position here in Picado. Yeah, well, SLR, you know, give them, give them some commitment here. We were talking about geographical high ground and Overwatch never being more critical than on a map as vast and wide and open as this desert Miramar. And we saw it pay out in spades in round two uh, for several teams. But realistically, with the zone shift being this way, it's got to be a contestation for high ground between the likes of SLR, INF, Dark, Dead Eyes, and even further in the Northwest between the likes of Dauntless and Nemesis competing from two different points of high ground. At that stage, you're still a bit vulnerable when that many other teams hold high ground as well. 100%, absolutely. It's just everybody is kind of ele elevated around the same height and definitely loses its, uh, loses its potency having that with that many well, other SLR. teams on the high ground. Mm -hmm. SLR. I think I did. Did I see that in, in the kill feed correctly? Did SLR lose a member? Or is it something? No, you're right. Mind? You are absolutely right. Kindness did end up getting taken out there. And it looks like it was Inferno Esports that started out. Kindness was the one that moved down to get the flank above Amrit on Dark Esports. And it looks like it did end up kind of working, working against him there. Yeah. Well, sometimes you can kill him with kindness and sometimes gonna get killed instead mm -hmm. and i want it's just a shame that rude dudes aren't aren't really in here the dad joke puns would be on a new level right now <laughs> looks like we might have some contestation but well i was as i say it it looks like extreme slayers might be falling away from sentinels potentially oh yes there is uh yeah it, no real confrontation not, it, not it, just it, yet mm -hmm. actually i take that back there's there's some shots being fired i don't think it's gonna be even 
uh, we're switching over to uh, realistically. I don't think that... Yeah, it doesn't look like Sentinels are actively trying to engage much with it. I think they actually were able to uh, disable... Looking over at Robert there, his vehicle's on fire. So I wonder if Jit and Krish are the ones who disabled that. Robert's definitely pinned down, is going to need some help. And here come the rest of oh. the Extreme Slayers. Yeah, well, here comes the, uh, the A-team here. Indeed. Coming in, Poppy Sour with an off angle and utilizing this boulder cover. But here's the issue I find on Miramar is that usually when you start honing into one particular team from a high ground, uh, it, it'll leave you a bit seeing red, kind of uh, zoned in too much, tunnel visioning, if you will, and susceptible from about 270 degrees exactly. of other... Yep. Yeah. 100%. So, and it was DE who actually just started taking shots here. Case in point. Yep. Robert's done. It is down indeed. I think they were. Let's see. I think DE may have had uh, one of their members go down, or am I mistaken on that? Let's check. No, it was. It was. Uh, it was Robert. Slayers yep. lost a member. You're right. No, Leon went down too, but they're quick to pick them up. So it was yeah. kind of a trade off here. And here we see Blade really not trying to let let the pressure off, keeping this barrage of bullets Ooh, raining great down, shots. and he does get the takedown on Robert. Brought back only to be sent back down to the prone zone. That's a tough pill to swallow. No question there. Extreme Slayers hurting right now. Only down to Remix and Hayuya. Yeah, it almost leads you to wonder why was Remix so far away? Or why, better yet, why was Poppy Sour so far away from Remix? If they really were just, uh, you know, a two-piece at that point, it feels like given the the state of how today has gone, that it's certainly a situation where you'd want to keep a solidified unit intact at least, you know, uh, in, for the first four or five stages. I mean, Extreme Slayers, a very talented group of uh, players. Regardless, they are pretty uh, pretty comfortable in their, their solo V... I, I don't know, 1v2s, mm -hmm. their 1v3s. Mm -hmm. They're definitely comfortable taking their ones. Um, but it is so early on that there's literally 44 other threats on this field. Absolutely. So even if you even if you got everything going in your favor against one enemy, it, you've got the odds of you being third party from another angle and eliminated pretty high. Yes, absolutely. And now they are just sitting there with only, uh, well, with Remix and Hayuya separated. That's really going to hurt them. We're not sure if they have the vehicles. I see this vehicle next to Remix is disabled, so they're in a tough position right now. Yeah, I just checked out Remix's perspective, and Remix is a belly bandit right now. Mm -hmm. And all for nothing as Poppy Triste li literally just drove right by him. Of course he wasn't aware of Remix's location. Not budging an inch. He is not breathing. Oh, we do have uh, oh, Hayuya, though. Just watch. Or was it Remix yeah. I saw who just got a knock on somebody? I think it... I think it was... I you know, it was tough for me to tell. I think I just re realized that I was staring at the wrong game. No, all good. So I think I'm going to maybe even... Let's I wish see. there was a way to mute this version of it and so I could only see yours, but... Well, we do still okay. have a little time here. I thought we were missing a big fight, but no, these guys are just no. rotating in right now. Give credit to Dauntless... Uh, as well, you know, coming in from the southern flank, northbound into the zone, but coming in at a high ground point could really spell bad news for teams like INF and Golden Eagles, um, especially for Golden Eagles, who's currently preoccupied with INF and having to pull a eastbound flank rotation to avoid that confrontation. They were hoping for a little bit of high ground themselves. They wanted to make an eagle's nest up in the sky, but that ain't happening. They're going to have to compromise. Indeed. Oh, Titans. Yes, I seen one of them just got eliminated, knocked, and thirsted. Uh, and that's by our solo yes. from R7. No and this, we were talking about him. We were talking about him just, uh, what was it, five, ten minutes ago when he was reduced down to a solo. We're like, hey, you know, the only real shot he has of contributing for the team at this point is going to be to lay low and best case scenario maybe some kill steal elin but realistically the point game would have to come from placement um for the most part mm -hmm. so the fact that he point. was able to get that was you know that's not nothing it's definitely Certainly gonna help not especially nothing. against a team like titan game you're weakening them at the same time oh Chaco took a lot of damage from that last nade right now gonna try to heal up here yeah we're talking about heavy hitters 
you know, Titan, who has been a bit underwhelming today, we know quite a bit about him to, to know the contrary. But that means that this is two, you know, Goliaths going up against each other here. 9Z versus Titan. And 9Z building up the kind of momentum that is a real problem for everyone else. Yes, without question. We mentioned it earlier. I mean, two in a row, that just speaks to to how well they're feeling it here. Even though they didn't get a whole lot of limbs that last time, a first place is a first place. Two in a row, especially, that's just going to make yeah. it feel good. Ooh. Nice hit did there. That, did that connect? It oh, hit. it didn't. It, I thought it, it did not eliminate Crow. Okay. But yeah, in terms of, of, you know, 9Z, you know, they already have a chicken dinner's worth of placement points gain over second. I mean, they have a 10 point lead over the Dead Eyes guys. That is a 10 points is a first place finish with, you know, with zero elims. That's a first place finish. That's already, you know, done over four short matches. Yeah. Imagine if they're able to can keep up and maintain this consistency. That would mean that, you know, three matches from now that that 10 point gain, gain would be a little bit closer to a 25 point gain or something like that. And that's where it's going to be a real discouragement if they are able to get that sort of lead over the playing field imagine what that does to the mental of every other team moving forward into day two imagine going in and feeling like they're you're the odds of you succeeding are slim yeah, well it's gonna affect that it's, it's definitely absolutely a morale, will a, a morale killer right there oh is that was that a knock on titan that i, I saw it was inactive i think actually getting a knock over or Scream, yeah, it was on Scream Zoo over there. It did end up going down. Ooh. So inactive. So this Good is shots. interesting to see 9Z and Titan getting. We were remember what we were saying. You know, if they start zoning in a little too heavily on one another, with while being vulnerable at like around 270 degrees of angles, it's likely that they're going to catch a third party. And it does seem like Sentinels, even with less manpower, they want to be the ones to get that extra elim. You are absolutely right. They're sitting here. They were holding that high ground. Oh, no, they're going to back off now, though. They were taking shots in that direction. Yeah, we've been saying this about them. You know, it, it, that, that's now the third time we've seen Sentinels uh, bow out of a situation that they've already put the work in to have the advantage on and the numbers in their favor. Uh, but... It's important that our viewers be reminded pretty consistently here that the participants don't have the scouting knowledge mm -hmm. that the observers mm -hmm. have. Yes, so uh, as easy as it is to judge, remember that they might not be as aware. I think that they had to have had some idea. Ooh, simple taken out by Hayuya. Nice off nade. In the Very nice nade. And that's 9Z getting taken out of this one. Finally being unseated Cut from that top spot rocker. here. Yes, a, a, a hill that they were the king of is now the hill to die upon, it seems. But that is a blessing for not just Dead Eyes guys, but for everyone else. That means hope is on the horizon. And, you know, they weren't able to acquire a single placement point. Uh, and in terms of elims, three elims, okay, that's not bad for, you know, surviving one stage. But three points is not enough to maintain what they've built. So if Dead Eyes Guys is able to do anything at all um, above the three point bracket, it, it's gonna be closing that gap. But for everyone else, it really is the opportunity for to play catch up. Yes. Add some ketchup to that chicken dinner. And, you know, as broadcasters, we love we love to have that storyline that opens things up. It's not just one team dominating. We may have a nice little Cinderella story developing with one of these other teams who maybe has been underperforming to this point. I definitely like the opportunity for these other teams to come out with that top dog going down. Let's see well, what is happening here now. We did just have a zone shift. And that is going to make things interesting here. Nemesis have a good high ground sitting above these other teams. Love, love this position that they've chosen to take. Yeah, give credit where, you know, where it's due. Nemesis, you know, they have been a team that has been fairly limited in what we've seen from them. But coming in uh, at this stage with only three players remaining on their team, they're trying to make the most of what they have, make their numbers count. And the best way when you are under undermanned is to really have that overwatch to kind of alleviate that deficit, the overwatch, the scouting info. And I, I think in this case, they were able to get a pretty good line of sight over, let's say 80% of the playing field. If they were to utilize it. Problem is, uh, 
so is Dauntless on the other end of the of the spectrum. Yes, indeed. We're looking real quick over at Titan Gaming and A. Dart, uh, Dead Eyes guys, uh, BI Sentinels were over here too. Inactive was able to hold off one of those BI Sentinels members, Jit, who tried to push over there and get some damage. And that inaction from BIS Sentinels kind of working against them again. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Um, one moment. Oh, good. Let's see. Inactive is coming up here on the edge, trying to hold off three members of Dead Eyes guys, and they're going to go down. Krish pops out, though, from BIS Sentinels, tried to get an ambush. And that is it for Titan Gaming NA and BIS Sentinels. Oh! <gasps> That is a tough one. By any stretch, that is a tough one. Oh, well, hold on, you just changed something, Red Eyes. Give me one second, guys. I certainly did. Yes, I was hoping that that might actually happen. Indeed. Yeah, please. Oh, good though. Perfect. <clears throat> All right. So, where is our next point of contestation gonna brew from? It looks. Well, I mean, in terms of positioning at this point, I, you know, it's e it would be easy to commend the Golden Eagles for having the center point of zone, but we talked about this yesterday, Beans. Uh, there are scenarios, especially on Miramar, where a early rotation into one of the later stage zones can actually be pretty detrimental. And for a team like the Eagles, uh, they find themselves, yes, they have a little bit of a, a high ground uh, to work with if they're able to climb that hill. But realistically, uh, they're going to be pretty vulnerable from just open land field. And there's so many teams on the edge that do hold higher ground. That's I a think great point. In this case, mm -hmm. it's going to, it's very likely going to pan out in against them. They, I think before that happens, though, I think before that happens, they're going to put up a little bit of a hook onto uh, SLR potentially. Yeah, but I'm in curious doing about so, that. Mm -hmm. If they do that, if they do decide to engage with SLR beneath them, the odds of them being third party from behind go are immense. up 100%. Yes, yeah. immense if they do. Everybody will hear those shots for sure. So, yeah, for, if, from the initial spectating point, you can even like get eyes on Golden Eagles, getting eyes on the opponents below and be like, why are they not firing? Well, there's a method to the madness. Absolutely. I mean, 100%, you can go guns blazing into any situation, but you got to have that strategy sometimes. And that is definitely a strategic approach, not to outright push them, but to decide when and decide how. So we'll see. These two full four-man teams are right in the middle of zone. I think they might be our last four-man teams. Yeah, I think. Besides yeah, Dauntless. Just Dauntless and the Eagles mm -hmm. currently that are, that are the only two four Ah, uh, you are right. Swallows. SLR did end up losing one of their members early. We saw that with kindness going yeah. down. Yes. Yep. Yeah. But realistically, you know, it, the Golden Eagles having that four piece, I, I think that's great. But the fact that they're all in one solidified unit, it, it uh, reduces it, it, the effectiveness it, of it for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially given the lay of the land with three teams beneath them and behind them, that, that that's exactly what they're trying not to have. Uh, to deal with. They're, they're holding the lower end of zone to try to not have to account for their back end, but it's just a bit too early to position yourself there. Um, and, you know, I think it, it is going to probably more than likely end up hanging out against them. Regardless, we've got other things happening here on the playing field with Dark Esports closing the gap between themselves and that beneath them you are absolutely nemesis. right yeah let's check that out real fast and they've been holding on to these foothills up here trying to get a better angle on some of these teams nearby and i guess that they did end up taking uh one of those members it was fate that from nemesis that went down to those dead eyes guys okay well i like this position that they're holding on to now nemesis gave up their high ground they were actually forced off of it and then we do have dauntless over there in the distance on a hill as well. I'm not the biggest fan of Dauntless's position here. Let's have a look at it. Not, not really. No, I gotta agree with you. Well, actually, no. I, I take that back. I was looking at um, I was looking at SLR, unfortunately, but I actually do like Dauntless's you know what? position. Yes, they do have a nice little flat spot here that is gonna give them some cover. I spoke a little too soon on that one, and they're actually gonna be able to hold it down here. This is in zone too. Yeah. The the only thing I'll say is, you know, their biggest threat would be um members of golden eagles at this stage 
Oh, is that Golden Knights Dead Eyes, guys? I, yes, sorry, it's yes, really it hard is. for me to read the names at this point. Yes, size. so yes, you're absolutely right. Dead Eyes guys across the way here who also have a pretty good position using these foothills. Yeah, and the thing is, is I don't see either of the, these teams really wanting to compromise that high ground advantage over this, you know, dinner is what we'll call it. Mm -hmm. You know, these victims on a plate here, the low ground disadvantage in full swing but to engage if dauntless engages with nemesis or eagles it's almost certain fire to come in inbound from across the field by dead eyes and vice versa yes case in point yes 100 it's mm -hmm. already happened yep we're seeing these uh these guys really use their positioning well but now the zone has shifted again and you see it is gonna go against Dauntless, Dead Eyes guys, uh, Panthers, and Extreme Slayers there. These teams that did end up making that early push are going to be a little bit blessed with that. Well, the blessings uh, of the PUBG zones can be a little bit misleading. Mm -hmm. And what do I mean by that? I mean, well, we, we, we were just talking about these early rotations into these final stage zones on Miramar. They can be more harm than beneficial often. And that is primarily more specific to a Miramar match. Um, I, I, well, I think context is important, but it's, I think it's more common on a Miramar match. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're a team like Dauntless, who's having the patience to hang back, that little extra minute hanging outside, the, the teams are gonna engage with one another in that time. You're gonna gain more placement and then come in uh, from from that elevation edge with the high ground and be fa looking down at weakened teams yes. who just finished their altercations and it's just fishing a barrel. Oh, ho, we're looking at Dauntless right now trying to push this yeah, compound. Hayuya, the solo is taking on a full team. It did take out two of these members with maybe a little bit of help from the distance. Yeah, I, I think... Uh, I actually believe that I was watching the wrong camera on that one, but I had his perspective the whole time. I think it was him that took them all out. Yes, it looks like I it. could be incorrect, but look at uh, Papi Triste on, on your... Yeah, I see you've got a, mm -hmm. he's a little mm -hmm. desert snake working through <laughs> open field. And ladies and gentlemen, if you're wondering if this is a good idea, he just doesn't have options. Uh, there he you go. No choice. And and you sometimes you got to take what you what you got there, and that's really all they had. Hey, there are snakes in the desert. There's sidewinders and, and, and desert vipers. It can happen. It definitely can, <laughs> without a doubt. It's just, it's tough. He was wide out in the open, almost got to that next rock. I would have loved to see the solo, but it is going to well, be, what's this? Our Golden Eagles only having the full, the lone full four-man squad going against two duos and a trio from SLR. Yeah, a 4v3v2v2 to end our fifth round here. And any, I'm looking at the, the remaining teams here. I'm trying to see, is there any real surprise factors other than 9z and Dead Eyes not really making it to the ending stage? I will say Golden Eagles are the ones I'm surprised yeah. to see here, especially with them coming in. They only have one a limb here and they did just kind of stay low and and they got blessed a little bit by zone where they were if the zone had shifted off they probably would have been in some trouble but yeah they haven't made too many waves here so far yeah, today you're right you're right the eagles have not really drawn much attention to them which themselves which is kind of a little bit out of the ordinary for them i do feel like the eagles at time at certain points have certainly shown themselves to be a comfortably aggressive team so even in uh, earlier stages of this event, I think they've proven, proven that to be the case. So we are seeing a team that is prioritizing placement initially here. Uh, and not saying placement over eliminations, but they want to, uh, at the very least, do damage reduction. Uh, meaning that they want to at least have some easy points from placement before risking uh, their, their teammates here. I think you're right. Mm -hmm. Yes. But with only 11 people, I guess, realistically, seven other enemies left, I think it's time. You know, it's time to, at what point will you say that the placement is good enough? Um, every team that, that is eliminated at this point is going to be two additional points on the field for them. So, so why not go like for a, it, right? Well, I'm trying to, to say, you know, when do you 
mm-hmm. swift the, shift the strategy from this reser- reserved wait until the numbers dwindle to actually engaging on these third parties and getting some elims in those those last stages because we are at stage nine now you, the, the wow. time to do You're it right. is is here it's right now and yes uh, a lot of these limbs, especially if the blue claims it, that's going to steal stuff from you. Uh, well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Elsewise, Golden Eagles may even end up getting a first place finish. And if they do, it'll be with maximum 12 points. If they're able to get one, that's assuming they get another elim to do it, you know, and that would make sense. But a 12 point gain for a first place chicken dinner finish is kind of underwhelming. That's you're absolutely right about that. That's definitely a great point. I think we're going to see him start moving forward. Ked did end up getting knocked on the side here. Dauntless was, uh, I think it was Banger that was able to catch that Golden Eagles member. They're going to get rezzed up. Lots of nades coming back and forth right now. The Kobe nade from Ho Shuan oh. on Dooku. Well, the eagle has fallen from the nest. But oh. The eagles are mad. Oh, oh no way! Oh man! Whoa, Schwan is on point with these nades right now. He just made lightning strike twice. Martha Stewart herself could not have cooked nades any finer than that. And now, Quo realizes he has to cut his losses here. Koi down for the count. And now he finds himself outnumbered, outmanned, and outgunned on numerous sides, but he's got a weakened Eagles. And so if there's ever a chance to creep in towards Nemesis and engage, it's now or never. You are right indeed. You had to go against two of them though. And Nemesis did give a great credit. job of rotating yeah. out there. That give was- him, Give him credit. Mm-hmm. What more could he have done? Uh, realistically, without more utilities, what more could he have done in that situation? Absolutely. There, Ked is the last one from Golden Eagles now. Actually started out with some good shots on J7. And it is a 2v1 to decide this match here. All right. Well, the exchange of utilities has been thrown. And that, oh my goodness. He had some good shots there. And Nemesis getting forced. And they're getting hit hard by the blue. Spec goes down to the blue. And J7 coming forward with a Groza. 7-6-2. Absolute onslaughter here up against Ked of Golden Eagles, a 1v1, a fair fight to end round five. Oh, look at the difference oh, in HP! Oh, wow! Golden Eagles do end up pulling the win out. What a close difference it was on their HP to end it. J7 v Ked. Ked does come out on top. Uh, you know, give J7 credit, you know, he... He put up a, a good fight there, but realistically, a UMP versus a Groza in that close quarters, I think, you know, if there's ever going to be a gun to, to put the UMP in check, uh, at least an automatic close range weapon to put it in check, it's got to be the Groza or the MK. So I, that's not really one I, I felt J7 should have lost, but I didn't get uh, close attention to what his health was like before that push. Um, it was the blue. The blue was hitting him too. That was definitely part of it for uh, sure. Well, Hey, you know, I say it time and time again, I don't care who you are, what level you compete at, if you're a pro or the tier three or just community events, whatever, no one has a higher KD than that blue zone, brother. Absolutely. The blue could be so devastating when it does force you out, especially zone nine, like what we just saw. Spec did end going that. Something to note, Golden Eagles didn't get all of those final eliminations. They could have gotten more, but the blue did come in there and steal some of them. So I think they're walking away with less points than they really wanted to in that situation. And we were talking about it, you know, at what point is it, you know, what point is it an acceptable uh, switch to to a more aggressive strategy? If you're going for placement points, great. It's not like that is without purpose. Even with the shift towards eliminations on the new scoring structure of official events, placement is huge. And every, you know, once you get to the top five, every team that you survive longer than, that's the equivalent of taking out two more enemies. So it is a tough call sometimes, but with only, you know, with the the Eagles being a full four piece at a stage eight game with only one Elam, at some point you have to to flip that switch. And this is actually a team that we know is comfortable in their confrontations. Mm -hmm. So it is a bit of a stumper, but I think, you know, these guys have shown that they know what they're doing competing at, at that professional level. So as much as I want to say what was the plan there, I think that they they know what they're doing. And there there is, as I said, a method to the madness. And I'm curious to see as we move in to round six, uh, what is going to be the tone that we end the day on? Is, is 9Z going to continue to put this damper on the rest of the playing field? Or are we going to see the tides finally turn? 
That's a great point there. Uh, Golden Eagles were playing pretty passive now. Maybe this win was what they needed to really get their morale up, their swagger, their confidence to start engaging some of these teams early on because we haven't really okay, seen they that. They actually had six elims. They had six elims. Wow. That's, that's not bad. It, I it's mean, better than you know, I expected. It's, it's not, yeah, it's not anything to say, oh, wow, or woo. You mm -hmm. know, it's not like, oh, it's not like, oh. It's an average. It's, oh. And so we add that to a first place finish, a 16 point gain. That's a strong finish, a, a, a solid finish. But, you know, we'll see if 9Z is going to let that stand or if, you know, what happened in this past match, that early Elim before placement was a fluke. Yeah. Only time will tell as we move into our sixth and final match of the day for day one of the grand finals of the PMCI season three. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, we still have six more rounds of action, mayhem, and strategy coming at you tomorrow. This is only the first half of of the doom for for everyone else but 9z so uh as we move into round six will these teams change the tides uh stick around we'll be back in just a few short moments to find out
Oh, let's go. We uh this is exactly what we needed to see, Beans. Honestly, this is a a contest now. We have got a serious contention for that first place spot. And basically in all top five positions here, only eight points separate first and fifth place. Mm-hmm. What? Well, yeah, alongside INF, no less. And both of these teams are teams that we hold to pretty high expectations that I personally feel have been a little bit underwhelming today. So, oh, and all the wild 9Z and extreme slayers in the distance. Yep, they've lost. Oh, man. Hey, remember what we were saying? I, I granted, I, I may feel a little bit guilty about this because I, I feel like maybe I have uh, steered people to thinking that that nine Z was stealing the show with with how many how their point lead, and I was clearly uh, mistaken about that. So the active hunt nine Z at the beginning, it's a risk, and it's definitely a risk for the Slayers, but. Hey, if they if they're able to do it successfully, even uh, more so, evening the odds for the rest of the playing field. Yeah, I don't. Are they coming? Oh yeah. <gasps> hey, the three hundred tactic. The three hundred tactic. He gives himself a little high ground and does it with a shotgun. So realistically, even if he misses, uh, you know, in a four foot wide aisle, it's still going to hit some pellets. So I think that that was under the circumstances the best possible play he could have done. And uh, a shotgun, any shotgun at that point would have been the ideal. S twelve ain't, ain't anything to wag your finger at. They want to confirm themselves on this one. Oh, but we, okay. Yeah, this is gonna be interesting. It looks like we're still, hold on, how is, what is 9Z's? Let's oh, see. Oh, it's just Chaco. It's just Chaco, no, oh, he gets Remix though there. Oh man, Remix. Hey. Let's see, and that is it. 9Z will end up being finished off there, guys. This Ooh. is it. You know, this is the change in the tides. The last two matches have seen that gap between 9Z and, uh, well, essentially the rest of the playing field, but particularly Dead Eyes. And, uh, well, now the top five places are all pretty close. The This is the, the match where opportunity is most prevalent mm -hmm. uh this is mm -hmm. what the teams were waiting for this is the chance to capitalize on so now that if anyone in that top five bracket saw 9z eliminated in the kill feed i think as it is uh i believe that says match five or six but if we're, if oh, we're on our six match, you are correct? absolutely correct about that thank you for well, the heads up it's all good uh but the context of it being the six match and with the front running team eliminated first what is it going to be like for the other t four top five placing teams in the bracket so far? Are they going to go hyper aggressive or are they going to ensure placement to really, uh, you know, of, of all else, above all else, make sure that there's some point gained uh, between this deficit Definitely. from 9Z. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're not putting up a single point this match. It's just not happening. So... We just, oh my goodness. just did saw we that just fight. A squad wipe? Yes, we did. A wish from KR Esports, the last member there. Oh my goodness. The S12 has been just dominant today. Yeah, has the S12 received a buff or something uh, that I don't know about? Great question right there, because we have been because, really seeing some all-star plays with it. Well, yeah, up until, you know, the survival stage here, or uh, the last chance stage, I, I've been seeing, you know, a, a huge abundance of DBS. Uh, and especially, you know, in uh, in the pro circuit, DBS is frustratingly prevalent. But I've definitely today seen a shift towards the S12, and I've seen it pan out pretty well. Oh, boy. Crow. Nice. That nice crow is Molly. burning. We're eating crow oh, tonight. Oh, man. Coons down through that perfectly. He did. And that is the only problem that I have. 
have with Molly is, you know, sometimes even when you do everything right, it's not enough with it. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a trade. You, you, you know, the Molly has plenty of advantages that the nades don't as well. But it that one does seem like he was almost robbed of a knock. <laughs> yeah. And Crow literally only taken down to half health after he was set on fire. I believe he walked into it twice from my from my perspective. Yeah, you are right about that. And he was able to recover quickly. Ooh, we do have the rest of them pushing. Crow turned around quickly and knocked Kunj down there to help his teammates out. And now it's just bad boy left from INF. Mm. Well, yeah, he's going to have to make his final stand and that nade's going to hit. Boom, baby. Nice nade there. I, goodness gracious. I see... I was watching both perspectives and uh, I saw that nade throw. I saw where he was saying, I said, if that doesn't hit, <laughs> I'll be frustrated. <laughs> great, great well, squad wipe there for Titan the Gaming NA though. Let's see the zone. Oh, I'm excited Every now. Every Aaron Gale today has wow. been an absolute slap to the cheek of the participants. And this is amazing news for us, the viewer. Uh, you know, just so much potential real estate and and land surface area has been denied from the participants, at least for this point. And so now uh, the the bridge points between the northern uh, half of Erangel and Military Island, this bridge on both sides is going to be absolutely huge. yes the the gatekeeping potential that you can get from it and i remember seeing in season one we saw this a whole lot although season two it didn't end up being as much of a factor but uh these bridges were really really important zones we saw a lot of crazy fights one of my most legendary fights i've ever casted nova esports before they changed going against mazexis mazexis pulled off a 2v4 right at the north side of that west bridge so uh, we, we're going to see yeah. some interesting things happen with this zone here in play for sure with those bridges. Goodness, man. That, so you're talking about what, a year and a half, two, two yeah. and a half years ago, maybe? Uh, uh, yeah. Almost almost a year and a half ago, I believe. Okay. So, yes. Has it really only been a year and a half since Nova migrated to in Hyper? Or the members <laughs> of Nova did. Right? Time flies. It's crazy. Or time All does right, not fly well, enough. Um... <laughs> one of the two. <laughs> you know, uh, it's interesting to see the lack of contestation for the northern portion of bridge, but realistically, um, extreme slayers position makes sense to me. It does make sense because it, even if they don't have zone favor them, it, the odds of them being suspected of swimming from, from the, uh, is that Novo area mm -hmm. it, or yeah, pardon me, the Milt of power area, you know, no one's going to really be intentionally expecting that unless they all. were ex already engaging with them. Mm -hmm. And Good point. so I, we're going to find out if I'm right here, because it, as I say, it, it does look like dark esports may have some knowledge of it, or they're either that, or they're trying to get the care package, but they are hanging by on that water point And, yeah, I, I would imagine it's probably for the care package. I think it is, yes. But that also, that care package being there could absolutely work against Extreme Slayers because if they do try to cross, well, then again, yeah. well, then again. It, it could be, you know, we'll hey, see. look this way. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, it looks like we might have Golden Eagles and the Dead Eyes oh, guys. Now, man. this could be interesting. You know, Dead Eyes guys, definitely the most to gain this match uh, above all other teams. I mean, they, they're in second, but barely at the heel of 9D. It is, this is theirs to really close that gap in. And so if ever there's a team that I, I expect to either be playing conservatively for the first five stages or on the hyper aggressive, it's going to be one or the other, but it shouldn't be idle. Yes, you know, it shouldn't I agree. just be nothing. Mm -hmm. You have to, you have to have action here. You can't just do nothing and expect yourself to well, really be on those, those leaderboards. You can't expect yourself to have an amazing match by sitting back. I'm so glad you said that because in this case, in this map, in this context of it being the last match of the day, actually the golden Eagles don't need to put up any kills. Um, all they need to do is get to the top eight. And at mm -hmm. that point, every placement point is a point closed in on 9Z. And all they need is four points to close in to be tied. Good Anything point. past that is icing on the cake. And that, that win for them definitely helped them out for sure in that aspect. Gave them a little more but, uh, boost, a little more standings. Yeah. But what you just said, though, is still 
I mean, if there's not been a main takeaway lesson for the playing field, what you said is so true. It's just in this one contextually <laughs> specific case. For a little the different Eagles. here, definitely. Yeah. Well, we both have those teams nearby. We also have Dauntless coming from the north, and I think all of these teams have their eyes set on a similar way of crossing here. Yeah. It looks like Lotus and Extreme Slayers had the same concept uh, uh, just from different angles, mm -hmm. but this could pan out quite badly for, for Lotus if the Eagles were hoping to find a boat at, at Primorsk or Ferry Pier. Um, and looks like Casper might even be boat scouting here or just um, overwatching for his team who is rotating inbound. Yes, you looks are right. Looks like SLR and Dark. Ooh, yes, let's go see what's happening with that. That is going to be on Military Base Island, and it's going to be a, a bit of a distance between these two teams. Yeah, and now here's the issue I have with that is, realistically, both of these teams have positions of cover. So without an insta rush on the knock, I don't see it being really worth either team's time to engage in because you're just going to be using up your resources, your bullets. Um, they're going to be using up their bullets. Mm -hmm. They might damage your armor. You might damage their armor. And best case, even if you are able to acquire the knock, the ability to acquire the thirst from that position. It's difficult. You know, if you, if, Very difficult. Yeah. Well, I mean, in, in terms of, uh, let's see, who was it that was just north of dark? Um, they were SLR. holding that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, SLR. So SLR, if they are getting knocks or getting knocked, they're immediately out of the line of sight. Uh, if they're from on the rooftop or behind the building. So realistically the only thing that they can do is is insta push or mm -hmm. or just play conservatively you know, and sit back and send more pop shots right <laughs> yeah i mean because if just engaging for the sake of engaging that's just using up needed resources um that could really come in handy in a stage nine altercation yeah I'm looking over here oh, titans oh titans firing. yes titans indeed are in some action here and that's both bridges have Eagles. action going on here but titan gaming and a golden eagles hold both on the north side of this east bridge i think titans might be down to crow i'm not sure it's is that no, that's no wrong. it's that's three wrong. of them that's yep wrong. yep pz yeah. did end up getting eliminated but there's still a trio but rana and dooku on the other side are just those two for golden eagles well look at this not all birds fly but some do swim and dooku is one of them Indeed. Just like that, I mean, realistically, the escape that they were hoping for could be thwarted if Crow had just peeked over that edge. But you understand his uh, rush to find new positioning in the zone. Mm -hmm. he, you know, even if he's able to get, get a little bit of scouting info from his teammates on where they are in the water, all he's got to do is get to the other side and just await the inevitable presentation on the platter definitely a great point there we're looking over at the other bridge now too we we called it out earlier that these bridges were gonna mm -hmm. be crazy this is a three-way fight on the west bridge right now uh yeah, dauntless is coming R7 in and, and and uh dead eyes guys are here as well oh a lot of craziness Bo leads with a great shot there on carry dauntless is hurting right now they came in trying to third party and it's all of a sudden just pain left here just trying to well, find some cover you know, Payne, uh, someone who has been a force to be reckoned with for years now. I mean, even in the the tier two bracket previously in Forsaken Gaming, if that is the same thing, uh, very, very, very formidable variable for the entire playing field. Um, I cast or cursed him for sure, but in this situation, he was outnumbered. It was and tough. Just swallowing a dead zone. And so the odds were stacked against him for numerous 100%. reasons, but mm -hmm. you know, certainly not to be taken lightly. Dark Esports pretty close by a confrontation. Oh, you are uh, right. With Nemesis. Yeah, let's have a look at that. Dark Esports is right where they right where we left them last. They were in one of these uh, hangars, I guess we call these, and mm -hmm. we've got Spec right on top of that same hangar taking shots towards Extreme Slayers. And I don't think Boy. Nemesis is aware of Dark Esports being in here. Yeah, I don't think Spec has that knowledge yet, and I don't foresee Amrit giving him that that bit of info um, at all. I, I think if it, he's waiting for Spec to drop down to try to get to a position of cover or try to reclaim some resources, and that's gonna be you know the biggest shock <laughs> mm -hmm. of the day for him. Mm -hmm. 
Definitely. Because no one's going to be, at that stage, no one's going to be expecting that much patience from Dark Esports. Really? It's, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you'd think that these teams would be kind of going for high ground, but they are just kind of content with staying low. Lotus Esports yeah. moves into where Extreme Slayers are. Oh, oh yeah. man, I didn't even see Extreme Slayers laying low here. Fetty coming yeah. with the nade. I think that is going to be a little change in the that neither of us really expected from it. But Robert is out of there. The Extreme Slayers do meet the... Oh, my goodness. They got, they got oh, wiped they there, surprisingly. They missed the bracket. Yes. They missed the bracket replacement by one team, and that's unfortunate. Wow. Yeah, but that was know interesting. Mm-hmm. Even more interesting to note, the Dead Eyes guys aren't here. Yeah, they got eliminated on that bridge in that chaos, and uh, surprised that they didn't. I'm surprised we didn't see some more of those teams try to cross on the water. They wanted to keep their vehicles. They wanted that for the late game, but it really worked against them there um, in that situation got, as well as Dauntless. We got Dark Naomi and R7 Cog, as well as Straight Out of Nepal and Sentinels. I think I, I'm not sure how zoomed in it is. Um, so you might have to double check for me, but I think we have two confrontations. Let's go and check that out for sure. It's just so hard for me to tell from that blur. Yes, yep, yep, yep. Over here looking at Straight on Paul just sitting above Ooh, BIS, I well, believe, right? That's who you're looking the at. The king on the hill, and in this case, the hill is the broadcast tower. And this is interesting because King can't really engage with any distant al distance altercations if he's aware of the enemy's just beneath him. If he's aware of Sentinels um, and they're not aware of him, then he does not want to give up that opportunity where he could just have them as open picking. Yeah. Um, it, meaning, you know, if, if they just walk outside of that building from where his position is, he could potentially one nade three, three enemies. Yes, without a doubt. And uh, you know what? I just noticed straight on a Paul's positioning right now. You see how spread out they are. They are. I actually thought this was a Ooh. solo looking at King at first, but no, they have a full four man still. They are just out there all spread out, all four of them. But look at what it's spread at, but it's with a purpose. All four positions mm -hmm. are on high ground. Mm -hmm. And they can all kind of cover each other's backs too. So I actually like that a lot. I don't know if I like it yet, but I think it's a smart attempt. I just think it might be a little bit premature. Um, because as you can see, there's still 24 or I guess 21 other enemies on the playing field and no telling where that zone was going to shift. As you can see, it has shifted and it only favors one of them. So they are finding themselves in a weakened point, but with Sentinels and Titan so close by, it might be King's saving grace, his escape route. Oh, yes. Oh, we have in action. <gasps> we have uh, Titan Gaming moving up towards BIS Sentinels. And... This is King's chance to escape, potentially. It's not going to be a better chance. I agree. That is a tough spot to hold on to compared to one of these big hills. And uh, I would not oh, want to be stuck boy. up there myself, especially with a with a crew like Titan Gaming NA underneath me. Yeah, but with, you know, Nepal, uh, straight out of Nepal's King, having what was previously a high ground position, he could have essentially... Uh, I didn't see how weakened Titan was from that altercation, but it could have been a real opportunity for him. It would have probably been a self-sacrificing opportunity, meaning that he probably wouldn't have escaped it alive, but he would have been able to acquire some almost definite elims on the board. And you know what? In, and to speak to the point that, that we made earlier, I said I like their positioning. If King had tried to ambush that, wouldn't have really had any backup from that, yeah, from that position right. that his team did choose to take. You are right. You're right. I, I'm looking at it now, and uh, I, I think I might have to uh, kind of back up a little bit and say I get why uh, mm -hmm. he was reserved about that. I think you're right. Oh, Titan Gaming and SLR here right on top of one another. Koi is the last this. one left. This is going to be interesting. Very, very I much so. I do think we found on numerous times here Koi being the last member up for slr because i know this fish out of water analogy dad joke thing i've been doing has been pretty recurrent here but Koi, you know a, a long standing professional player same can be said about kindness and elegy uh the fact that we are seeing slr with one elim yet again yeah 
Yes, that's a great point <gasps> there. Oh, inactive had a nice nade, but it was followed yeah, up. Yeah, how did that not immediately uh, not wreck into him? Like, yeah. I mean, it looked from my position like, like it was, was a one tap. I thought it was going to be a one tap and done there, but no, he did need he did need Crow's help to follow up to finish him. But they do end up getting that squad wipe on Bis Sentinels. Well, Ooh, Crow, got a Crow immediately turned on Spookies <laughs> there. Those are some great long shots. They were, and he was able to, to secure a thirst, or was that stolen from him? I do believe no, he secured it. Yep, he got it. Look at this Titan as a three piece with 11 E limbs between the three of them. Now, this is the Titan gaming that we were talking about. 100%. This is the Titan we expected to see. And boy, if there's ever a, a good time to do it uh, today, at least in the context of today, the last match is a tone that you're going to enter tomorrow in. So I think, you know, if you are going to go all out, make sure it, at the very least to go all out in game six and add some uh, little bit of panic to the rest of the playing field definitely I without question don't know where titan was placed overall at the beginning of this match i'd have to look at the, the, the scores again but i think it you know regardless as long as they're able every moment that they're able to survive longer than another team at this point it's worth their interest they've already got uh, at the very least a 17 point game for this match to speak Anything, yeah quickly yeah, speak and, that and they were 11th place overall coming into this one so oh, so they're down okay, there a little bit so, but it's a three or two-way tie at least with them so they are absolutely going to get some placement points from there or at least some some positions in the leaderboard they are going to move up a few spots with this performance here so far at least and remember first and fifth place were only separated by five points so mm -hmm. i mean you know a 17 point game already that's not going to be like it's not pretty impacting it's gonna it's gonna be a heavy a heavy variable absolutely no question on that and look at straight on paul they actually are in a pretty good position now they're still a full four man and they've got some decent high ground same now. spot on the mountain as in match four or three four mm -hmm. Where, wherever our, our last Aaron Gale match was, that is the same mountaintop that they were able to acquire previously. And just coincidence upon coincidence, good luck, fortune favoring them. Uh, it leaves them in the zone with the highest ground available. Yes, 100%, and I'm loving that for them. Uh, they haven't made too many moves here today in terms of like but big fights for them. So this could be their opportunity. Even mm -hmm. more so than just the high ground, it gives them the edge of the zone on a zone that has very little compound cover. And remember what we were saying last match is sometimes a late rotation into an in-game zone can can be more beneficial than prime real estate claims before everyone else. And I think in this case, as long as they're able to hold on to some high ground, even if they're having to uh, swallow a little blue juice to do it, uh, I think that overwatch over the entire playing field could literally lead to four or five elims in a matter of 30 seconds. If it's just, or even better yet, even if there's no easy knocks and elims, those extra placement points that are going to happen in the time, which we're seeing already, we mm -hmm. just lost two teams. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, pardon me. We're still at. No, no we've I, lost two teams. Yeah, no, you're right. It was two. It was indeed. Yep. So in 30 seconds, uh, they've already gained four more additional points just by doing nothing. It all comes with a purpose. And sometimes, yeah, sometimes you got to go on the aggro. And then sometimes it could be more beneficial and advantageous to wait. And I think in this case, for straight out of Nepal, it's more advantageous to just lay low. They only have two elims. They're just playing the slow play. Yes, they are. And they actually just claim those... Uh or one, at least one of those against Nemesis. So Nemesis is a solo next to them. And I believe Lotus did just take out a Rusher 7 member, Titan Gaming NA. Now they're coming in hot here. They're gonna push up right for the edge of this fence here. Ecog is in trouble, gets lit up there, all Swiss cheesed up. Oh, uh, oh man, 1v, 1v3, I think it was, we just saw there. Well, look at this. Yeah, straight out of Nepal getting a low mm -hmm. ground flank rotation underneath the last remaining guy from nemesis I, I know you guys there's no even no point in pulling the map up you can see it on the top right of your screen um you can actually see him Just, weaseling his way there yep oh he's actually holding position and i'm surprised too i thought fate was going to try to move up he's looking away yeah. and just uh just yeah just staying low as possible right now 
Gonna and just try that's... to play for a third place position here, or at least just uh, try to outheal the blue, maybe. Or not even outheal the blue, but just be a solo, not even grabbing attention from these other teams. So we'll see how that works oh, out for Nemesis. Vortex of straight out of the ball getting a takedown, and he's from the most center point in this zone, the most yes. vulnerable mm -hmm. position of the playing field. Vortex able to get the takedown, but remember what we said at some point, you know, it's they're gonna be lining themselves up like fish on a platter. Well, you gotta take some elims. You can't be afraid of your fights. Granted, straight out of Nepal has been reserved, but not because of fear, because of the, the, the benefit that every second staying alive longer than everyone else does mm -hmm. for them. Yep, that's a great point right there. And we do have all of Straight Outta Nepal just focusing heavily on Titan Gaming NA's position there. I'm not sure what Titan Gaming NA is going to do here to try to get out of this. They are uh, definitely pinned mm -hmm. down here. Well, they don't need to necessarily... You're right, they well, do you're have... Right. Well, it's close. It no, is very you're right. close. No, you're right. You're right. You are right. Um, they are kind of stuck in between a rock and a hard place. The rock is we'll say the fence and the hard place is the blue zone yep and straight out of nepal has nothing but room to spread out and as you can see wdn already getting a side flank and titans a little dangerously close to one another i say that because one nade uh well i i do think if inactive were to leave that little sniper tower that one nade could potentially get all three of them. yes you're absolutely right with how closely grouped they are and i'm surprised to see that from titan gaming we do usually see them um, given a good spread there, not really giving teams the opportunity to do that. Yeah, but they, I, I totally understand why they're doing yeah. that. I mean, they don't have abundance of utilities. In the There's nowhere for them to go without being literally lining up for a slaughter. Mm -hmm. And get, that's due to straight out of Nepal's uh, strategy. I mean, granted, I said the late bound rotation into zone. And realistically, it does favor straight out of Nepal advantageously. Yes. Um, that high ground overwatch and that patience paid off in spades. And now they had a real opportunity for a bully strategy or maybe even the boa tactic. But that is not going to be the case anymore with WDN out of the equation. We are left here in a 2v4 scenario stacked against uh, Titan. Yes, 100%. WDNN, who was a... <gasps> Nice member. He had a nice angle there. Oh, I just saw that return shot up there towards King. Was that Crow on King? I think it was. I don't know. I also think I may have misspoken there. It looks like straight out of Nepal. Okay, they were just, there was two members down. But WDN is not like to be revived. So it is realistically a 3v3 scenario. Mm -hmm. A fair fight. Yes. With exception to, you know, high ground. A... In terms of team numbers and, and manpower, it's a fair fight to end the last match of the day. Love to see that. I really do. Or Doran's going to try to move up here. Does end up going down, try to get behind that tree. And you can see they have used all of their utilities. They have no smokes left. Straight out of Nepal. Just absolutely Ooh. lighting up Titan Gaming NA on their way to getting well, that win. Stra straight out of Nepal and straight into first place. You can't say anything against them when they get a chicken dinner on the tip of their tongue finish and do so boasting a very healthy seven elims getting a nice 17 point takeaway now granted remember what we were saying uh in the previous matches 17 points that's about a that's what you would consider a above solid performance i'd say anything above a five elim takeaway for a team can be considered probably above average in that light so it's just barely above it but I think 17 points for straight out of Nepal, very much uh, an improvement for what we had seen. But also Titan, you know, the beast that is Titan, uh, putting up a 15 point second place. Now, what does that mean? I'll tell you what it means quite a bit more uh, than our first place. Mm -hmm. So straight out of Nepal only got two more placement points than Titan. So that means 17 points going to straight out of Nepal, and that means um, 13 points going to Titan. So literally only a four-point deficit uh, between the two. I don't know. Hold up. I'm wrong. Bad math. 23 points for Titan uh, when you do the math because I, I, I can do numbers. <laughs> well, uh, 23 points is going to be saying quite a bit more than 17 points. That is a yeah. six-point lead so titan won this match without winning the match yeah 100 um, 
Yeah. I mean, we but really even more so. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Nine Z not putting up points. Yes. That's where the that's extra literally what I was about to say right there. You took the words out of my mouth. Nine Z getting taken out early on. It really blessed these teams. It gave them a chance to catch up in the leaderboard now. And we're not just seeing one team who is separating, who's doing these amazing things in this. It's pretty well evenly matched lobby. I mean, obviously, we do have our teams at the top there, but we really haven't seen one team just pulling away that we're saying, Wow, except for 9Z for at one point. But... We thought, we thought. Mm -hmm. yep. I was wrong. I I misled. I misled. I have proven today that math is not my strong suit. But take it a step further. Before this match, five points separated first place uh, from fifth. Or I guess it was, yeah, first and fifth. Mm -hmm. Only five points mm -hmm. apart. So, pardon me, second and fifth. Five points apart or something like that. Uh, I know there's a 10-point lead previously then it was a four point lead regardless it is at each other's heels anyone uh could still win this and that is the beauty of it like going into day two we're not having a contest for second place people aren't duking it out for silver per se granted two slots to super league ain't nothing wrong with silver when when it gets you uh to the pmsls mm -hmm. but uh you know when you take 9z into account the fact that they're not you know, a PMSL team, and they're not going to be able to get a PMSL slot. It's even more open picking where third place in itself could be the, in essence, winning. Yes, absolutely. I mean, that's kind of what we look at here. Obviously, getting first place overall is nice, but the PMSL slot is what these yeah. teams are really, <laughs> really, really focused on, what they're gunning for. So it a could thousand be interesting. bucks is great, mm -hmm. but 250 bucks after you, you do the split. That's nothing compared to just even the bragging rights of a PMSL slot. 100%. It does a lot for you. It gives you that, gives you that respect from other teams. You were able to make it and there. You're you're representing NA overall. Categorically, a professional team at that mm -hmm. point. You're yes. Categorically, yes. a tier one professional team. And once you are seen in that light, it's pretty rare to regress back to a lower tier, mm -hmm. um, or at least perceived as a lower than professional uh at least in my experience yes you're so right. i think you know this is one of the kind of revolutionary events for pubg mobile because it is really taking the community uh the community brackets the community audience and giving them their transit their their vehicle for transitioning into professional practice and that is something that very few events uh allow for 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 the tier two tier three open scrim community mm -hmm. and what are we seeing we are seeing numerous teams dominating on that advantage 9z no one expected them to dominate slr no one expected them to 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 win their ones against titan granted yeah they might not be going to pmsl but that's only by technicality what it shows is that there is the talent in the community and there is that that real drive to go to, to that level. Mm -hmm. And all that is needed sometimes is the chance to shine. I absolutely agree with you on that. And really, really do love this this uh, tournament for that reason. Just the fact that we do give them that opportunity. And we've seen actually one of them. We got a few community teams here in this top conversation. One of the ones I want to highlight real fast, even though they are a little bit lower on the on the leaderboard. Dark Esports is one of our teams that is just a full amateur team there. They came from the community as well. They came from basically the lowest depths of that in being in winning out in their community um, and making it all the way here. So I got to give them props. I know there's a few others I'm missing as well, but um, really, really do love to see that here for, for some of these teams. Yeah. Just, just to give them that opportunity because NA needs that, guys. We need to have more representation here, more competitiveness. Just all of that will help us as a region overall, in my opinion. Yeah. I, I believe it was uh, eSports Charts that put out the um, the article basically saying that in today's modern eSports world, it's the community events that are the transition point to pro level. Mm -hmm. It's This is the, the gateway to that pro level. And with that uh, little bit of incentive added into the Control Invitational, this is the front runner of that. This is the beginning of a new era and i think an era of opportunity for everyone and well said i mean like how awesome is it for us as observers casters and commentators 
to get fresh meat to talk about. Like it is, we have, I have talked about extreme slayers now for years. I, I, I can't tell you how many in hyper rants I've gone on. But now I've got a new team to study. I've got to learn up on on 9Z. I've got to take a little more notice to the rushers. I've got a lot more to work with here and new faces to get you know acquainted with. And I couldn't be more excited about it. And I couldn't be more excited about day two of the grand finals. Absolutely. It is definitely going to be a great one tomorrow. Six more matches ahead of us. And like we highlighted earlier, no one team has really separated us, themselves from the pack. And we actually have live score points coming in right now. Red Eyes, let's go ahead and have a look at this here. Go ahead and pop that in. And yes, let's see what we're looking at here after that one. And <gasps> look at the difference in points on this. Wow. Okay. 9Z oh still at the gosh. top, but narrowly. Opportunities really wasted here. Gosh, Dead Eyes and Dauntless. I remember it, the, the gap between first and second was four points before this match, correct? Yes. Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Dauntless, realistically, you know, with, with nothing but room to stretch out there, a little bit of bad luck. And that's a little bit of a saving grace for for 9z but realistically what does it tell us once again first place and fifth place are only six points apart first place and seventh place only eight points apart this is literally anyone on the left side of this screen and even the top 10 i'd yeah, say <laughs> yeah yeah i'd say yeah top 11 yeah top 11 mm -hmm. anyone in the top 11 could put up one phenomenal performance and given the context of if the top performing teams like 9Z, Dauntless, Dead Eyes, Titan, et cetera, don't, that could literally bump someone like Extreme Slayers all the way up to first in one match. Yes. With one match being holding that much weight, every match counts. And I really, and, really uh, love to see that. It's it. These yeah. teams are going to see it. They'll know that this is a, I mean. Well, it's going to. It's going to affect game one tomorrow, mm -hmm. hands down. We're mm -hmm. going to be, able, if this didn't go down this way, the exact, like with a point dispersion this close, we could have seen uh, a very, very different, much more aggressive day uh, at the beginning of games one and two of day two. I think instead we're going to see people continuing to play with hesitation but hesitation with a purpose no easy mistakes taking it extra seriously and not willing to sacrifice unnecessarily so yes. uh mm -hmm. that's what i will that's what we love as commentators that's what the community loves everyone loves an underdog and everyone loves a comeback story well there are 10 teams on that bracket board who have a potential for an underdog comeback story come day two of the PUBG mobile control invitational that is Grand a great finals. point. Yes, super excited for that one, guys. We are going to wrap that up here for today. Great, great action across the board. Red Eyes, thank you for being on board with me, bringing all this great one. So, so excited for tomorrow to see how this is going to turn out. Yeah, couldn't be more excited. Thank you guys so much for letting me be a part of this. And uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow for the final day of Season 3 of the Grand Finals of the PUBG Mobile Control Invitational. All right, everybody, have a good one. Enjoy the replays from that last one. We got a few. And yes, 7 p.m. sharp tomorrow. We'll see y'all then. Bye-bye.